Welcome to Busan, South Korea. This lively port is South Korea's second largest city after Seoul, with over 3.4 million inhabitants in the city itself, and roughly 8 million in its metropolitan area. It's the economic, cultural, and educational center of southeastern South Korea, and is the sixth busiest port in the world. Busan is a modern seaside paradise that boasts glorious beaches and stunning natural beauty. It's also home to breathtaking Buddhist temples, fascinating cultural landmarks, and dazzling markets. We're exploring it all in this documentary. From the beautiful Taejon Day Resort Park to an overnight stay at a peaceful Buddhist temple, we're diving deep into the city's food culture from Dopoki and Dak Gangjang at Sajik Stadium to the exotic raw seafood at the Taejong Day Clam Tents. Hang on tight and come with me to Busan, South Korea. Let's go. Hey, good morning everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Seoul, South Korea. Today we're doing something really special. We're taking the KTX, the Korean Express train, the bullet train, all the way down to Busan, the second largest city in the country. It takes around two and a half hours. I'm super excited. I love bullet trains. And once we get there, we're gonna eat a delicious buffet lunch. Are you guys ready? Let's take the KTX. And this is Seoul Station, the main train station here in the capital. Beautiful building, and this is where all the bullet trains leave from. And if I didn't mention it before, this is the fastest train in the country, and this is the most traveled route on the bullet train. Last time I lived in Korea, I was cheap, and I took the slowest trains everywhere <laughs> to save a few bucks. <laughs> yeah, and if you were to drive down to Busan, it would take over five hours. They also have a regular train, takes six hours, and obviously the best way to do it is by taking the bullet train. And yeah, as you can see, the station is relatively huge. Lots of platforms on this first level. There's so many different like little retail spots. There's restaurants, like so many restaurants. And here they have like, not just like bento, but like a lot of noodle, a lot of odon, like a little bit of hot pot right there. What else? Wow, what a big station. You can get lost in these stations. This is not as big as Tokyo station, but it's relatively similar. I mean, this is the biggest station. I'm pretty sure it's the biggest station in the country. So one thing you have to do before getting on the train is come here to Dunkin' Donuts and get yourself a rice cake, right? So it's a rice cake stick and a green tea latte. We're gonna get it right now and then drink it and eat it on the train. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah, I'm ready, man. Second breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a little stick. It's, it's not that bad. It's a snack. I mean, we ate over 90 minutes ago, so I yeah. can take it. I can handle it. Okay, so we're running through the station, and because we leave literally in six minutes, the train leaves. 9 a.m. departure, and that's in six minutes, exactly six minutes. I always recommend getting here early. Try to be on the platform 10, 15 minutes early. You do not want to miss the train. Yeah, we're going on first class, and this is car number two. First class. Oh my god. Can you help me? You got it? You got it? Let's go. Let's do it. We're here, man, just offloading our packs, and then we've got a little snack to eat. Looking forward to it. What do you think of first class? It's pretty nice, man. Lots of leg space. Hey, you've already popped open the tray. Gotta like it, man. And only two hours and 15 minutes since over there. Gotta love that, too. So here on first class, they have a two-one configuration. Huge windows. They're like four foot long windows. And they also have a place to charge your batteries. So charging my batteries right here. Lots of leg room. You can also extend back if you want to. Whoa. <laughs> Feels great. Two and a half hours like this. Perfect. There are no zombies inside yet. <laughs> you guys don't know there's a movie called uh, Zombies to uh, Train no, to Busan. Tra yeah, Train to Busan. That's where we're at. So <laughs> beware, be beware of the zombies. All right, so here we got my little snack. This is a rice stick from Dunkin' Donuts. What is this? Looks very nice. Dude, it's a donut. Mm. Full of sugar, very compact. Mm. Very yummy. Wow. So basically, this rice stick is like almost like a, a just a donut. So a ricey donut with a glaze on top, lots of sugar. Very nice and crispy. Wow. It's a big rice stick. And the best thing to do is to flush it down with some green tea latte. It's actually like a matcha. Mm. So good. Wow. <laughs> so cold. Wow. This green tea latte. Dude, killer. So here on first class, they also give you this little like bubble kit, right? I think there's like probably some snacks in here. Yeah, a little cookie, some nuts, 
and here we have a white bee. This is what I love about Asia, they always give you white bees, they always want you to stay clean, always clean your hands, right? Perfect. Oh, that's great. So we've been on the train for about an hour and it's been such a smooth ride. I mean, it feels like you're just gliding through the country, lots of mountains, lots of tunnels. And yeah, I mean, here, this is very similar to Japan where you have to be really, really quiet on the train. That's why I came here where the bathrooms are to talk because people are sleeping and the guy who comes to bring you snacks, he's come by multiple times and told us like, shh, shh, you know, you can't be talking, you gotta be really, really quiet. So remember that when you come on the train. And yeah, I mean, two hours, two hours and a half to get there. Very quick, I mean, it's way easier than having to go to the airport and fly down there, which only takes an hour, but between the airport, you know, security, everything, it'll take you easily three, three, four hours to do it. And if you drive, it's five hours. So the best way to get to Busan is by taking the Korean Express train, bullet train, like 300 kilometers per hour. Whoa. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna sit down. I'll see you in a sec. So KTX first class, there's free water. There's this free water vending machine. Slightly complicated. You have to push and hold this button for three seconds. These light up. Then you can push this. There we go. Some cold KTX first class water. After a two hour and 15 minute ride, we are in Busan, Korea's second largest city. As soon as we get here, we're gonna get off and go straight to lunch. I am super hungry. I ate like at 6.15 in the morning and uh, it's been almost five hours, so it's time to eat. I, think. I thought it was great, man. So fast, efficient, and we arrived right on time. And you, what do you think? It was awesome, especially that free water. Hydrated, cold, wet. <laughs> <laughs> Busan station is, uh, it's really nice, very clean, very open, but it's definitely a quarter the size of the one in Seoul, right? Yeah. yeah. Very small. It's, it's much smaller, but it looks extremely modern, new. It's got restaurants. Looks like a very chill place to wait, be waiting for a train, basically. Yeah, they got vending machines, they have restaurants, they have yeah. small cafes, bakeries. I mean, beautiful place. What I love is how clean this place is. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that's like, it's spotless. It's spotless. I mean, yeah. you can literally lick the floor if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, but VIPs, VIPs. Yeah, VIPs. So it's Western. <laughs> kind of, we have Western Korean, yeah, the mixed buffet, but they're more focused to the salad. That's why I go for the lunch. Okay, yeah. but we can do a bibimbap. If you want, because it's a buffet, yeah. so you can choose it. Yeah. After a short 10-minute bus ride, we're here at the restaurant Vips. So it's uh, it's a mix. It's like Korean, also Western buffet. They say the food here is awesome. But we're gonna have a traditional Korean food. I'm only eating Korea while in Korea. So let's go inside and eat. All right. So the way it works here, it's obviously buffet. We're gonna go check out what they have and then eat some delicious Korean bibimbap. I love bibimbap. But I really want some kimchi. I don't know if they have kimchi though. Specialized in salads and desserts. You can yeah. see lots of desserts over here. Ooh. And here we have salmon, we have some bread, lots of salads. Wow. Now let's look for the Korean food. Let's find the Korean options. Get a plate. So okay. starting off with the keiji nao, seasonal veggie mix. So it looks like like a really red hot sauce. I don't know if that's kimchi, but it looks like more like cabbage. So here we have some barbecue shrimp. We have pork barbecue. What do we have here? Some chicken wings yep. and some cabbage. I'm gonna get some of this and the shrimp. Get like two of those, right? Come over here, get some of the pork barbecue. This looks amazing. I love barbecue here in Korea, so I'm gonna get a little more of that. And then obviously fried chicken. Yeah, it looks like it's glazed, man. Oh, good. Let me just get a big piece right here. What else? Maybe a little wing. And then here we have sticky rice cakes. I've actually had this in Japan. Yeah. It's an area and they have some Korean food. I love this. It tastes like, like similar to mochi. Yeah. Like similar taste, obviously like rice. Yeah. The red sauce. While wow, my plate's getting really full here. Super spicy sauce. What else? Some spicy noodle sauce. Look at this. Super red, spicy with veggies. Yeah, in Korea they use a copious amount of gochujang, the red pepper paste sauce. Yeah, so as you can see, lots of red here, right? Dude, I am so excited to eat this. I'm starving and I love spice. I think you're the first to the table too. Yeah. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our little packet. Always clean your hands. <laughs> this is always in every single Korean restaurant they give you this, you know, a little wet wipe. Yeah. Clean your hands. No. 
they really all had germs. You know what? I lived here for a few years. I didn't get sick once in Korea from, from they're very, sure. so sanitary here. Super sanitary. So I think I'm gonna start with the spicy noodles, guys. Spicy noodles right here. Mm. Nice and cold. Wow, it is spicy, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. It is skin it, it, It's not like a crazy spice, but it's too right away. Mmm. Wow. These are like glass noodles. Very thin. Almost feel like creamy with the red paste. <coughs> Damn, where's my beer? <laughs> my god. So then next we're gonna try what is this called again? It's called duck boogie. It's a uh, spicy rice cakes. So spicy rice cakes, duck boogie. Duck boogie, exactly. Mm. Super dense rice cake. Yeah. Mm. Not so spicy. I'm actually getting some of the spice from the noodles. Yeah, dude. I think you're gonna like that one because that's one of the most popular Korean street food mm. snacks. We're gonna be oh, having that it. for sure. I mean, it's really good. Really filling though. I'm gonna stay away from it for a second. Okay. Next up, we're gonna try some of this like spicy salad. So it's like cabbage, spring onions. Oh yeah. Mmm, dude. I love everything so spicy. This one's crunchy. Mmm. Love the onion with the cabbage. Mmm. Dude, it's so good. I love how fresh the vegetables are. You can really eat healthy in Korea. <laughs> Caveman diet. Yeah. Protein and, and vegetables. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we have the pork. Pork barbecue. Wow. Dude, that was almost like brisket. Like Texas brisket. Wow. Oh my god, super juicy, very tender. Dude, it just fell apart in my mouth. So the spicy shrimp, gotta use your hands, right? You gotta break off all this, right? Oh, it's a little hard. You don't eat this, you take it apart. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So just gotta go in, always go in from the bottom, rip it off. You don't want to eat like the shell, no? Oh yeah, it's, it's too crunchy, huh? It's too crunchy. I mean, unless it was like super fried, like deep fried, you do it, but oh, yeah. like this, no way. No. So just rip it out, take some of the legs off, and then here we go. Mm. Mm. A little spicy, not too much. Almost feels like a, like a little glaze, like a honey glaze on top. Mm. Next up, we have like the sweet and sour fried chicken. This right here is gonna be bomb. Korean fried chicken is the best. Oh my god. It, it almost like a sweet and sour honey chicken from like a Chinese restaurant. Uh huh. Mmm. Good. Super good. Yeah, exactly what you said. Break it up. Oh. Oh man. Everything has been amazing. I think for me, the winner. Spicy noodles because they were extremely spicy. And the pork. Barbecue pork. Wow, man. You guys know I'm a beer snob. I only drink craft beer. And here we have some beer from Jeju Island, which is the island off the coast, uh, southern coast of South Korea. It's a volcanic island, so they say the beer from there is phenomenal. I think this is like a pale ale. No, it's a it's an ale. It's a pelong ale. It's really good. It's really good. So remember, always pour like this. If you don't pour like this, you're gonna get a lot of foam, a lot of head. Best way to pour, bam. Wow. All right, let's that try is it. a proper mug. Wow. It's a little light, a little hoppy, it has a very crafty taste to it. Oh, it's so good. It's not just a regular watered down beer. You know, there's four different beers in the country. I've tried two of them. They're very similar to like Bud Light and Budweiser. You know, almost no alcohol. This has, you know, a little bit of taste, a little bit of kick, and it's a very nice light beer. Gumbe! Gumbe! Oh wow, so good. We had a delicious, delicious buffet lunch. Ooh, a little spicy. Very yummy. Where did Sam go? He disappeared. You, you ate good? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Busan is the second largest city in Korea. The population is 3.6 million. So the South Korea, the total population is 52 million. And the Seoul population is 10 million. 
but Busan is a second largest city, but population is only 3.6 million, bigger than the Seoul. And then also the Busan, more than 80% is a mountain. That's what we call it as a Busan since the 14th century. So booming is a lot and or the heavy, and the Sanmin is a mountain because here is a lot of the mountain. That's what we call it as a Busan. Yeah. But it is a very funny thing because they say a lot of the mountain, but when I open my eye, we can see a lot of the ocean. So still I'm thinking why they picked the name the Busan. I think that we can see a lot of the oceans. Our next stop is Gamchon Cultural Village. It's a small area here in Busan. We're gonna learn all about it right now. Actually, before the Korea War, it was it's just as a mountain, it made that uh, small hill. But after the Korea War, some some refugees, and especially in 1955, some the cult groups, some the very special religious people, they want to make their own village in this place. So that's why they make a makeshift house, and then also another plenty of refugees, they couldn't find the right house. That's why they move it. Also, they stay together in this place. So that's why you know they arrange very well. When when you see the house, you understand? So look at that. Okay, so this village is really, really colorful, but it's a very, very touristic spot. As you can see, lots of tourists here, a lot of Korean tourists, but a lot of regular, you know, Western tourists. Sam, what do you think? It's really colorful. It reminds me a little bit of Valparaiso in Chile. Yeah, exactly. Colorful and, buildings. And there's a lot of street food here as well. As you can see, there's some like, I don't know, those like rice cakes. I think that's, yeah, it's like rice cakes and then there's also some, it looks like macarons with ice cream. It looks pretty good, man. <laughs> it looks all delicious, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around for like an hour, explore, and maybe get a beer. Let's go. <laughs> I'm really loving the cotton candy here. As you can see, it's like a, like really cute designs. Here we have a snowman. Here we have like the uh, the mushroom from, uh, from Mario Brothers. Really nice. Mina just got one. Really funny. And right across from here we have a shop. It's called Kevin's Shop, and they have like the a fat Thor and a fat Iron Man. They got Thor right because he was fat in Endgame, but Iron Man, I never seen him like this. <laughs> And here we have like a little mini observation deck or viewpoint. Check this out, look at this view. You see everything, like super colorful. I love the buildings. Wow, this is amazing. And you can see over there like a green mountain, super green, lots of trees. And then all these buildings and every single one is a different color. We got green, orange, red, pink, yellow. I mean, it is so vibrant. Man, I love this neighborhood. I wish I was hungrier. <laughs> we just ate, so I can't eat any street food right now, but it's fine. This second viewpoint is way better because from here, we get a clear view of the ocean, the port of Busan right there. And you can just see how colorful it is. Wow, wow. This is my favorite spot in South Korea so far. We came to this little cafe called Yuen Cafe, and we're going to the second level because from here we have an incredible lookout point. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. This is the spot to come if you really want to get views of this area. This is just ridiculous, bro. <laughs> this is so cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little snack here and have a coffee green tea latte. So no beer, no alcohol, stick in the green tea. Oh man, I've never tried a coffee green tea latte before. It's so delicious. It's basically like matcha with like two shots of espresso. Mm, very cold. So we had an awesome day today. We went from Seoul to Busan on the KTX, the Korean Express train, the bullet train, 190 miles per hour. Only took two hours and 15 minutes. Then we had an incredible buffet. I mean, I ate straight Korean, lots of spicy stuff. My favorite things were the glass noodles with the spice and also the, the pork barbecue. Wow, so tender. It really felt like brisket from Texas. And then we came here to this beautiful village. I'm really like stunned by it. As you can see, the view is just epic. You got the port of Busan right there. Lots of like really colorful buildings, hilly. It's so different from Seoul. It's a must visit. And yeah guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel to my channel. Thanks, Samuel Nodri. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. Peace.
What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Bomosa Temple, right outside of the city of Busan, South Korea. Today we have a very exciting day because what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay in this temple overnight. We're gonna go, we're gonna change, we're gonna have dinner, we're gonna sleep in a really cold environment up here in the mountain. We're gonna wake up at four in the morning, we're gonna meditate, we might talk to some monks, and then we're gonna eat breakfast. I'm so excited, I've never done this before. Let's go inside and have a Buddhist temple experience. We're entering the temple now. I highly recommend bringing a small backpack with, uh, with your stuff because if not, you're gonna be like me carrying around a carry-on and there's no real <laughs> stairs. I mean, you have a lot of rocks, you have stairs. Whew. And here at the temple, the way it works is that it's like men's quarters and women's quarters, okay? So everybody's sleeping in the same area. And then we have a communal bathroom. All right, all right. Shoes off? Yes. Okay. Shoes off, yeah. So right now we're wearing our clothing. This is yours? Perfect. Your uniform. Thank you so much. I'm totally ready. This is our outfit, our uniform while we're here. And we have sliding doors. And that's where we change. Let's go do it. So this is what we're gonna be wearing for the next 12 hours. It's really comfortable. It's almost just like a pajama, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, change right here. So here we go. First up, we got the shirt, right? So yeah. let me see, this is a huge shirt. Does she think I'm an extra large or something? No, <laughs> Maybe that's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right there. All right, here we go. Oh, I love it. Oh. Comfy? Super comfy, dude, super wow. comfy. Right here, look good, right? You look good. It's a little tough. Put your finger in here, it's a little different, right? Very nice. Oh, dude, this is amazing. Feels great, too. I love the color, no? It's a nice color. I think I'm gonna ask them if I can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it home with you as a souvenir. Wow, like it? Look yeah, good. it looks great. Pants time. Pants time. Let's go. Oh, wow, this feels great. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Just being here is like peaceful. No? What a different vibe, huh? Just like, an hour away from the downtown. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are one of the way. The Komasa Temple State Program. Uh, I am the supporting monk for the program. And so there's another monk uh, who you, you guys will probably meet tomorrow. Uh, he is in charge of the entire program here, and I am just a supporting monk. I'm going to teach you guys how to do three bows. So we're going to bow three times. So. Um, the number is important because the last bow, the third bow, is going to have an extra step. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys first and then you guys will follow. Uh, so I'm going to go step by step. So every bow, every any number of bows, you always start and end with a half bow. So the half bow is just basically like this, it's a greeting. And then, uh, okay, I'm going to show you guys the first bow. So you're going to go on your knees, then you're going to put your hands on the cushion, then your forehead, you're going to flip your hands over, you're going to flip your hands over, you're going to raise them up just below the ears, just below the ears, then you're going to put them back down, flip, half bow, okay, on your knees, hands, oh, we have some, <laughs> flip, up, down, flip, and up. For the past half hour, the monk has been instructing us on basically the rules of the temple and what we're going to do today. So the first rule is like, got to be very quiet. There's a lot of areas of the temple where we can't even speak at all. There's some places in the temple where we can't film, but basically he was teaching us, you know, how to bow. And that was what we just saw, you know, how to bow, a few different, uh, you know, things you have to do in the buying process. This is the first bow, second bow, and then the, the last bow is the third bow with this one, but there's multiple different types of bows. And yeah, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go tour the grounds of the temple, and then we're gonna go have dinner. Follow us. First gate out of three that you have to pass through to, in order to get to the main temple ground area. And so um, usually, I guess you could say that the standard is three, but some of the bigger temples have two or even four. Uh, and a lot of the smaller temples, they'll just have one. But uh, most of the bigger temples in Korea, us usually they have three. And so the first one, we call it the one pillar gate. And the reason why we call it that, even though there's obviously four gates, uh, four pillars, is because um, there's only one row of pillars. So 
Uh, if you look at all the temple buildings, they're all rectangular. This is the only temple structure here in the temple where it's just one row of pillars. We just crossed the first gate of the temple. This temple has three gates. Some temples have two, some have four, but most of them have three. And what's really interesting is that the name of this temple is called the Golden Fish Temple. Really cool. Now we're gonna enter the next gate. If you look at Buddhism in all the different countries, it's not the same. It's completely different depending on which country you go to, uh, which is different from, say, Christianity, which is always basically the same thing you see in any other in any, in, in any country. We just passed the second gate, and in the second gate, there's four heavenly kings, and what they do is they basically fight off evil spirits from the Buddha world. Once you pass that, you make it here to the third gate. I don't really know the meaning of it, but this is the last gate and then we enter the temple. They're all very impressive, all very different, and they all have completely different symbolic meanings. I want to introduce you to you guys to this place. Uh, this is the place where the monks will play the instruments. So there are four instruments that the monks will play uh, before the evening ceremony, before either the morning ceremony or the evening ceremony. And so uh, you'll see a big drum at the center. Okay, so you guys see that big drum at the center, so that's one. On the left side, you'll see a fish made out of wood, so that's another instrument. On the other side, you'll see a cloud-shaped gong, so that's one more. And there's the fourth one, the big bell. There's a really, really large bell that you guys can't see. It's on the other side of that building over there. All right, so it's 5.30. The guy over there is ringing the bell, and that means it's time for dinner. 5.30 dinner, really early dinner here. And it's gonna be like a really simple Buddhist monk dinner. Oh, I'm so hungry. We had something similar to this the, like yesterday in Seoul, but that one was a lot like more elaborate. So here we are in the dining hall. We gotta take off our. Oh wow, this is how we're eating. If you if you want to kneel, I mean you have to kneel for an hour. So. Oh, that's too much. Five minutes is too much. <laughs> and instead of dining at one of the tables, which is just outside of there, we're sitting on mats, and we're going to be doing it traditional style. A nice setting here where we have the rice in front of us. We have tea, and we have like a bowl, and we're sitting on these nice little cushions. And we have to be a little quiet here. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about this traditional way of eating for the mouse, and then we can get started. And the chopsticks and this, you're going to put it on your lap. You're going to lift up your paru, and then you're going to unfold the bottom part. So this is your mat, I guess. And then you're going to take the first one, and you're going to put it on top. You're going to put the second one, the third, the last one. Up the spoon and chopstick, and then you're gonna put them on the second bowl. The largest one is for rice, so this is where you're gonna put your rice. The second largest one, the one on the right side, is for uh, the broth, so you're gonna put your broth here. The one where you have the spoon here is for the water, so you're gonna put water here, and then the last one is for um, side dishes. But you can put your side dish uh, where you put your broth. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna tap once and we're gonna distribute the food. So when the rice comes, you can put however much you want into the first bowl, the biggest bowl. And then after you put your rice in, you're gonna put the bowl in front of your forehead like this for a brief moment. And then you can put it back down. So first up, we're gonna serve ourselves some rice. And the rice goes into uh, the biggest dish. So we get as not, much. Not that. oh, that's a lot. <laughs> right there. Right. And then this dish is for all the side dishes. Alright, so next up we have like the seaweed style soup. So the main thing is don't get too much because whatever you get, you have to eat. So if you want more, they're gonna leave so the gonna food get some behind. Here. So you can mm -hmm. come to the center and get more. Normally we don't do that, but I guess. So here we have the banchan, which are the sides. Here we have soybean, right? Put it here. So the cucumbers, right? It doesn't matter. Like like we have the amazing kimchi. Cleaning your bowl. This, so you so uh, if you need a drink, so once we start I, eating, I, I we cannot more. talk. No talking at all. Okay, so what you're going to do is. You're gonna get the water. 
So once you're done finishing the first one, you can pour the water into the second one. Okay, so if you're done cleaning, you're gonna eat radish as well. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it out and wash it again. Oh my god, what an experience. What an experience. That was incredible. Just the procedure of everything. It was called <laughs> silent eating. Yes. 101. Silent eating. 101. <laughs> no talking. Yeah, yeah. So basically once we got the food, yeah. everybody starts eating. Yeah. No talking. You have to basically put the bowl to your face and you eat and you eat and you eat and you eat and you don't stop eating. I mean if you want to put the bowl down while you're chewing. You put it down, you chew, you chew, then you pick it up again, and you eat. Once you're done, completely finished with everything, then you put the water into the bowl with the rice, clean it. Then move it to the next bowl, clean it as well, and to the next one. And what happened is because we're like novices, or yeah. basically amateurs. <laughs> we, we, we eventually went and washed them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had to go wash them ourselves. Yeah. Then once we were done washing, then we had to come back, like dry completely. Yep. Then it was over. The hardest thing for me, I mean the food was delicious, you know, but the hardest thing was my legs. They started cramping up like halfway yeah. through. Yeah, you're just not used to sitting down like that for, for a whole meal. I mean, <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> a little too much. I mean, when I lived in Korea, I sort of got used to that, but it's been such a long time, my legs were cramping up too. And the hardest thing also is once I was done, I was looking at everybody and we're yeah. all about to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not supposed to make a noise, like nothing. Yeah. No peeps. And now we're gonna go hear the gong ring. Yeah. Practice gong. Practice gong. <laughs> location we're going to in the temple we have to turn off the camera so camera off oh my god we just got out of the evening chanting ceremony a 15 minute like ceremony yeah ending the day uh basically like do like a song and they ring a bell the whole time yeah but it's like it's a non-stop ceremony i mean up down up down bow left right down bow yeah I mean, exactly it was really cool we couldn't film it obviously and then in the temple behind us there was like 60 monks doing it yeah. and that's basically how they end their day and now we have about 20 minutes and we're gonna do another activity it's like i think it's like beads yeah. and bowing i think it's gonna be like 100 bows or something like uh, that i think it's 180 or something. 180 oh my yeah. gosh or, or 108 we'll i don't be, know we'll whatever. be ready to sleep by the time that's over <laughs> Sure. All right, let's go inside. Let's do it. This is the, the 108 bowels is about to begin. Um, I'm not feeling terribly flexible, so hopefully I can still walk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're also making beads as well, 108. So it should be a fascinating experience. You have to start with a half bow, right? So the half bow is going to be three taps. And then for each tap, you guys are going to do one full bow. Go down, do the hand motions, come back up. And then so we're going to keep doing the bows and then before the last bow, before the 108th bow, I'm going to give a verbal comment. I'm going to say this is the last bow. And then I'm going to tap, you guys are going to go down, do the hand motions and then for the last bow you have to do the extra step, right? So the one extra step uh, that you guys have to do. While you're doing that extra step, I'm going to give two more taps. I'm going to go... Then when you hear the two taps, 
you have to finish the last bow movement, the last step, the extra step, and you have to stand up. That was the end game of the day for sure. Oh my god. Oh man. So first like at first you're like, oh this is gonna be pretty easy, you know? Like the first ten or whatever. And then you get about halfway and you're like getting hot. And then like near the end, it's like your knees are getting like scratchy and like, Oh my god. And, like, at the end like, I didn't even want to get up in the last few bows. <laughs> you know, like, let's just let's just go to bed <laughs> on the mat. <laughs> no, we had to we had to do it. We had to do it. We did. Oh my god. Now what do we have to do? Do 108 beads? Yeah. Usually when you do the 108 bows, each time you bow, you put together a piece of the bracelet with a bead, right? So you get one bead, there's 108 beads, but they sort of simplified it because people would like hurt their legs doing that, you know, be on your knees so long. So we did the 108 bows, and then we put together the 108 beads into a bracelet. So you slowly put them all together. At the end, you put like the mother bead, and then you put this last piece that sort of finishes it. You give it to the lady, and then you have a bracelet. Check this out. I love it. I'm gonna have this bracelet on until it falls off. Look at that. Okay, giant sleepover time. Men in one room. The next room is women. As you can see, we're sleeping on the floor. Luckily, it's not too cold tonight. I think it looks great, man. The biggest sleepover I've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and so the way it works is that they have uh, lights out at 9.30. It is 9.19. So basically, the lights are turning off and you have to go to sleep. Wake up call is at 5 a.m. We'll see you in the morning. Peace. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, dude. You slept through the night? He slept through the night. At like 4, the mosquito hit me in the ear. At 4.30, the, the bell, the drum started. Oh, oh I did hear that, but <laughs> like, I went back to sleep. He was like, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> I mean, I slept pretty good, except for the mosquitoes. <laughs> So the morning exercise is meditation. There's two types of meditations. And what we're gonna do is the Santra meditation, which is just focus on your breathing. Okay, so we just had our half an hour meditation class. It wasn't really a yeah. class, it was more like he instructed us on how to do meditation, you know, count to five and then count backwards. So. As you breathe, you go one, two, but just focusing on the number, right? Number only. Number only. And if you think of something, you go right back to one. Yeah, he's saying yeah. that he's never gone to five. I feel like I got there once, no? Yeah, I have a lot on my mind. Like I zoomed <laughs> into one, like one's the only thing you see yeah. in your mind. And we did it looking out here, this beautiful view. I oh mean, the gosh. day is just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. You got this like calm morning breeze. It's just like something in the air. Yeah, so yeah. now it's uh, it's six in the morning. I'm gonna go for breakfast. It's buffet style, but still very traditional, like Buddhist food. You know, walking over to breakfast at six ten in the morning is really incredible. I mean, such a nice breeze, the light right now. It's like so beautiful and it's so peaceful, guys. I mean, I'm just like in awe with this place. And I love how we have these green, lush hills around us. Yeah, but I'm really hungry, so let's run to breakfast. So for breakfast, we came back to the same dining hall we had dinner yesterday, but this time we're sitting like in the, the main area where we have tables, right? Behind us we have a big buffet. I mean, we have like six different things, all veggies. We got rice, kimchi, broccoli. We got like some seaweed. I'm a big fan of veggies, so I love this. I cannot wait to start diving in. The veggies here in Korea have been blowing my mind. And I'm gonna start with the kimchi because I love it so much. Damn. Mm. Mm. Oh man, so good. It's a little spicy. <laughs> That's a little, a little too spicy right now. I don't think you're expecting that for breakfast. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is like a seaweed, right? Anyway, it's a root. Mmm. Very crunchy. Mmm. Very earthy. I love the sauce to marinate with. Also, like some sesame seeds. I'm just gonna enjoy a meal. I've seen a jippy. <laughs> Here at the temple, you have to clean your own dishes. So once you're done, right, we go over here, and let's wash it up. <laughs> oh, oh. Right there. Turn it on. Get one of these. Got to thoroughly clean, 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 clean. I'm really good at this. I do this every day at home. It's very therapeutic too. Therapeutic. Yeah, and you have to take everything off because you are the one cleaning it. No one's gonna clean it again. So the next person that eats, 
Don't let him get some germs. <laughs> <laughs> and they know who to blame, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gotta really clean it well. Let me see. So far, so strong. All right. Done. So once you're done, put the dry it. Where's the dry? Where do you put this? Once you're done cleaning, let it dry out a little bit, and then put it right here. All right, done. And now we're gonna walk to a small temple nearby. We're walking up this little path. Wow, love the birds chirping. It's getting really nippy though. You guys ready for the temple? Totally ready. ready for it. Yeah, we got full of kimchi. Ready full to of go. kimchi. Yeah. <laughs> kimchi stuffed bellies. <laughs> so the main temple has ten smaller temples surrounding it. This is one of them, right? And this one's famous because this monk right here invented a type of martial arts. This was like the headquarters of this martial arts. It eventually moved to a different place, but that's why it's so famous. And they also have some other stuff here. They have like fictional characters from Korea. They have uh, like gods from Korea also. So they have things that you wouldn't normally see in other uh, traditional temples, but it's very nice, very peaceful. As you can see, it's, it's not as small as most small temples because there's multiple buildings. And at the very top, we have a Buddha. And then here we have like this lion. I've seen this actually before, this lion. It's, it's another mythical character. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that's basically it for the temple. Let's go have some tea. For the past half hour, what we've been doing is we had tea time. Basically, we had tea with orange, and then we sat around and just talked to the monk for about 30 minutes. He basically told us a little more about the temple life here, you know, what goes into it, what they do, and then you can ask them everything, basically, just not too many personal questions. And yeah, I mean, the experience here was amazing. My first time staying at a temple, and I was blown away. I mean, my favorite thing, for sure, was the food. Very authentic delicious Korean vegetables. I mean, basically all vegetables, a little bit of carbs with the rice, but overall delicious. And yeah, I mean, just staying here overnight and experience like temple life, what Buddhist culture is and what these guys do on a daily basis is really amazing. So yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. Next time you come to South Korea, I definitely recommend staying at a temple and doing the temple stay experience. And if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below, subscribe to my channel. Dem and Audrey. Thanks, man. And we'll see you on the next trial food adventure in South Korea. Peace. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in beautiful Busan, South Korea, the second largest city in this country. And today, we're gonna do something really special. We're gonna go have a delicious royal feast, Korean royal feast, which is centered around one main dish, which is like a meat dish, and then lots of different vegetarian appetizers. But before that, we're here at the biggest or longest beach in South Korea, it's called Haeyeonde Beach. It looks beautiful, it is super long. Let's go explore the beach. Yeah. You've been here before? I did, a long time ago. It's been such a long time, I, I kind of forget what it's like. Oh wow, I, I'm already seeing like, it's, what do you call it? sand? Giant sand castles? Yeah. Giant sand castle carving, so. Yeah, it's like art. At the other side of the street, there was a little one, but over yeah. here, there's like giant ones, and they have like a concert over here. Yeah, we wow. also just chugged iced coffees. It's kind of like a pick-me-up <laughs> before lunch. Wow, yeah, this great. is beautiful. This is like a little exhibit here, right? It is, wow. it is. It's impressive. Oh my god, they're like giant, so this is not tiny. Look at that. It's like, it's like Westeros. It's like artwork. It's so impressive. It looks like King's Landing from Game of Thrones over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's check this out. So this beach has a humongous boardwalk. I mean, you got the boardwalk, you have the skylines, lots of skyscrapers. You actually have a, you know, a foot bath right there. It's actually closed right now. And then you have the beach. And over here, we've got like this huge sand castles. They have a little bit of that going on over here as well, but it's not actually done yet. And then, as you can see, we have this massive beach, and the beach is very wide. This reminds me of like Miami Beach, how it's like easy, like 100, 150 feet from the boardwalk all the way to the water. Wow, it's really nice and breezy. A little hot though, because the sun is really, really shining down on us today. And across, we have like a statue out there. And from here, if it looks straight, you see Japan. Right now it's a little bit of a muggy day. And I don't even think you can see on a clear day, but Japan's over there. Wow, I really love this. What a beautiful city. Look at that, look at the skyline. Lots of tall, tall skyscrapers. Very modern. This is like the new part of the city. You know, the old part is the center center, which is a little farther up north. 
which is like a 20 minute drive. This is a new part of the city. You know, this is where like all the, the businesses are, lots of offices here. People live here as well. But from what I see, these are definitely office buildings, a lot of helipads as well. Wow, this place is sick, I love it. Next, we are going for the Han Chunchik, the Royal Korean Feast. I can't wait, man, I'm so hungry. Let's do it. So basically, the lunch is gonna be pretty big, but I can't wait. Yeah. Sam has been like pumping this meal up for a while. He's been telling me how amazing it is. And the best part about South Korean food is that it's all amazing, really incredible vegetables. The vegetables here will blow your mind. So here in Busan, there's actually four beaches. We just visited the longest beach, and now we're going to Gwangali Beach, which is more for locals. That one had, you know, obviously more like luxury buildings, hotels, a little pricier everything, right? This was more locals. So the restaurant is on the seventh level. Here we go. Wow, guys, the view we got here from this restaurant is incredible. Sam, what do you think of the view? The view is insane. It's like, you see the whole beach, you've got a bridge in the background, and then you've got some tall buildings on the far right hand side. All right, so here we have our feast. We have like this mixed plate here. We have some duck salad. I don't know what that is. And right here we have some bean curd. Oh, wow, it looks almost like a, like a little oatmeal, right? Mm. No, very bland. A little bit of sesame seeds on top. Decent. Mmm. Very thick too. Thick. It was almost like a like ricey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump over here and get some of the duck. This one over here. All right. Wow. That was delicious. Very fatty. A little gamey too. I like the the sauce. It's almost like a not teriyaki sauce, but it's like. Similar, right? Yeah. Over here, I don't know what this is. So the sweet potato. It has a glaze. Oh, I love sweet potato. Wow, delicious glaze. It's almost like a dessert item, huh? It was actually pretty good because it's like very, very soft in the middle, but the outside is a little hard. Oh my God, so what do we do next? Do we just jump in here and pull? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna grab one of each. This is it like a pork right here? Yeah, it's pork in the samjang. A little bit of this, some, some onion. Some onion. You guys are talking to the spice master, man. Yeah, it's spicy. Mm -hmm. Spicy. Mm. Like two spices. It's pretty amazing. Really fatty, very tender. The two spices combined really hit you hard. You have this nice red sauce, and then you have like, I don't even know, it's like a, like a jalapeno. Bro. Good stuff all around. No, huh? it's, it's way harder to hop in. <laughs> I don't know what, exactly what this oh is, gosh. but it's really good. What is that? It's like a kimchi. Oh. This is like pork pork, right? This is this actually looks a little different. Look, so I'm gonna get some of this. Like that. Well, I'm supposed to dip it, so let's do that there. Let's do it like that. Sam so I've got straight pan there, and it was so good. Super, super gelatin like. Wow. Wow. The spice, man. <laughs> the spice. She was saying there's no spice. There's a lot of spice in here. Mmm. Mm. If you like pork, Korea it will be your jam. They have so many good pork dishes. The way they cook it is so different. Mmm. I'm mixing it with this like kimchi style thing. Wow. What do we have here? Okay, so next up we have three dishes. We have a shrimp and it has like some veggies on top. Yeah. Here we have, I don't know what that is. Is that like a pumpkin? Yeah. Like a teriyaki pumpkin. And next to it we have some some dish that has noodles. You have eggs. Here's chop chai. Sweet pumpkin glass noodles. Look how good that looks. And you get a little bit of so chop chai, sweet potato glass noodles. Dude, they're unreal. Mm. Very soft. That's good. Nice texture, man. Really, almost like a little spongy in a way. Mmm. Mm. Oh wow. Now the egg with the mushroom combined. Dude, that was so good. Leave that for me. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole bowl of that, huh? <laughs> here we have the the pumpkin teriyaki. I never had pumpkin tempura dog. Mmm. Very crunchy. Not so healthy, but I like it. <laughs> All right. Shrimp. In my hands, <laughs> right? All right, so I'm gonna eat the shrimp in my hands. I hate getting my hands dirty. And so you get it out like that. Perfect. Okay, here we go. 
I've never had a, a shrimp like this. It has like all these different things on top. Oh, wow. mm. So many different flavors here. Like carrot. You had egg there too. Huge shrimp. Mm. And here we have bulgogi, sweet marinated beef. Wow, look at that. It almost looks like like steamed in a way, you know? It's like freaking apart like that. Mm. Mm. I take that back. It's not like steamed. It's more like hot pot. Like whenever you do hot pot in China, you put the beef in or the pork, whatever, and it comes out just like that. Wow, it is amazing. Super well, tender. Going in for more, huh? Yeah, lots of flavor here, man. Wow. It's not spicy at all. Got some mushrooms in here. Got some sprouts. And the courses just keep coming. So this is the number one dish in Korea for foreigners. For foreigners. Good. That's so good. That's, that's <laughs> mine, dude. That's mine. <laughs> Next, we have my favorite part of the meal. We're gonna cleanse our palate with popungja, no, no, no. raspberry wine. It's almost like a raspberry rakia in a way, but not so strong. Yeah. Very wine. Like it tastes just like wine. All right, let me try some of the eel. So here we have some fried eel. The fried eel has like a glaze, right? Yeah. And I think we have what I think is it's this? been breaded ginger? too. Pickled, Pickled ginger. ginger. Oh, it's my favorite. And I love eel. Sometimes it's very tough, but I like it a lot. That's a nice colorful bite. Very crunchy. Mm. Mm. It's like eel tempura. But the glaze is very nice. It's very rich. Mm. And here we have shrimp tempura. I'm just gonna grab one of that. So if you want to, you can eat everything including the tail. I never do that. And this is actually a very long shrimp. And it looks like a light tempura batter. I mean, it's, the color is like more like yellow and it's some like herb inside. It really is. The meal that never ends. Yeah. <laughs> what, what number are we on? I have no idea, but it's getting up there. And something's under it. I don't know what this is. It's probably like a vegetable. Mm -hmm. Is it? Good. Exactly. Wow. I'll have another piece of yellow. I'll get it. Right? So maybe it was sweet potato. I'm not sure it was something else. Mmm. one more time. I love it. Uh, I had no idea this existed. Ready, Gambai? Gambai! Oh, it's nice. Oh, wow. It's so good. Okay, so this is basically sweet plum wine. It actually looks like a sake bottle, right? But the bottom, you can see the plums. It's uh, it's pretty good. It's I think it's way better than the one we had before, the raspberry wine. This one is a little, it's a little lighter. Nice. I'm very smooth. Mm. Take the bottle to no, I'm joking. This meal does not end. We have soy bean soup right here, fermented soybean soup. Yep. Then we have like five different herbs. We have some peanuts and mushrooms. We got two different herbs here. Pickled radish right here. Yeah. I mean, everything looks so good. And over here, here we have some special kimchi. It's like really, really fermented. He was yeah. saying it's like super special. The, it has a different taste. Yeah, the boss came out here and said, this is not what they normally serve. Exactly. So we're lucky. We're lucky. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the, the soup, right? Oh, I see crab there. Whoa. That's a crab, right? Yeah, it's crab. Yeah, yeah. So you get a little bit of that. Grab one, you put it with the rice, yeah. and you eat rice. So I'm gonna go here with the mushrooms first. I love mushrooms. So let's get like two. Mm. Very fresh. Very wild. It's like wild mushrooms. Mmm. Oh, the rice is super good. Super sticky. The rice is amazing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so next time I'm gonna jump on the kimchi, as you can see, it has this like red coating. That is always, that always means it's spicy. Yeah, yeah. So grab like that, grab a piece. Okay. Mmm, doesn't feel like it's been fermented so long, but yeah, I mean, it's spicy. Wow. That's the kimchi. The kimchi. I just know it's really good, it's really fresh, spicy, if you like spicy, kimchi will be your jam here in South Korea. Put them on top, right? Load them on the rice. So load them here. You might need to use a spoon. <laughs> like roasted peanuts. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. I'm in love with the rice. Let's gonna grab this one first. Oh, that's a big piece of tofu, man. Mm. Oh, wow. 
swallow a super soft tofu. It, it feels like it's absorbed the entire soup. The taste in there is incredible. Mmm. Oh. You can get big, big chunks of crab in there. Crab meat. Mmm. Some onions, some mushrooms. I don't know what else is in here. Lots of herbs. Veggies. Mmm. Another paddock cleanser in a way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's got a strong taste, strong so flavor. Grab this guy. <laughs> okay, this meal has finally come to its end, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so we have shike, which is like a rice drink. It's actually the dessert, obviously. Mm. It's like a, it has a ricey taste, very syrupy, very sweet. Mm, I like it. Mm. It's, it's like very milky. Yeah, yeah. And then next to it, we have pineapple. I love pineapple, so why not? Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. And then drink a little one of this. Man, this meal has been never ending. I gotta tell you, I thought we were done like halfway through and I kept eating everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Much, a little too much. I know what you mean. The Royal Feast Extravaganza is over. What an epic meal. Wow, I mean, it's a little a little too much. I mean, you think it's over and it's not over. And right now what we're gonna do is we're going to the fish market. We're gonna go pass by the fish market and see what it's all about. Let's jump back on the bus. What's the name of the market? Uh, the low mean is not like a street. Okay, so, so it's a fish market. Yeah, the ta gai chi. What are we gonna see market. there? Just everything? All types of fish? Yeah, the fish all. Though especially the you know the Busan city, you know, the Busan the fish. This this market's like outdoors. Check this out. Look at all the fish. A little bit fishy over here. Whoa, this Whoa. is cool. Isn't that cool? This is really cool. Egg <laughs> shop. Place? Oh, yes. Yeah? Amazing. Yes, yes it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have like huge clams, huge snails, we got octopus, we got crab. I mean, it really doesn't end. And this is nothing. This is just the beginning because there's actually, the market really goes into the building. So right here is just like a little bit outside. But if you walk into this building right here, it's a huge market. Wow, you wanna go into the market? The bigger market? Let's go to the bigger market. It's right over there. We're about to enter the main building of the fish market, which is right behind us, this building. But before we do that, look at this view. The port area, incredible views of Busan. Just incredible, guys. Beautiful. We've got many bridges. We have buildings. Busan is so different from Seoul. And the mountains, the aspect there with the buildings, I mean, the metropolis. Plus, it's full of nature. Let's go see some fish. We have just entered the fish market. Yeah. Wow. Every stall has a number. Yeah. If you look up, it's like 40, 41, 44, 51. Yeah. And there's so many fish that I've never seen. Like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. It's like, it looks like a mini, I don't know what is that. It's like a pancake fish. It's a way sanji. It's a way sanji. I can read the Korean. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here we have like, it looks like an eel, but it's not. It's like a snake fish, these. Yeah. yeah. Right? And basically what you do here is you buy fish fresh. You either take it home. Yeah. Or you take it to a restaurant upstairs and they cook it for you. They cook it for you right on the spot. And that's it. And the first thing, like when you walk into the market, you are like bombarded by the smell of fish. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Your nostrils are full. It's a bloody <laughs> mess. It's really a bloody it mess. It is, it is. But this is a fascinating experience and it just goes on and on and on. And it's also upstairs, but yeah. for and now we, we'll stay here. We can't even see the end point at the moment. Wow, I mean, it's boomerang. we're entering now 144, 158, like look at <laughs> 200 and something over there. It's crazy, man. Dude, it just really, really doesn't end. This is so, like this is why we came to Busan, because we really want to have the fish experience. If you really want to eat seafood in South Korea, you, you gotta come, come to Busan. Here. Busan's your spot. We walked around the market for like 20 minutes, yeah. saw lots of different fish, lots, lots of different <laughs> clams. I mean, it's really endless. I, most of these fish I've never seen before in my life. They're so diverse. I, I guess they're like 
from the sea next to yeah, yeah. right here? Right? I mean, yeah, there's some exotic looking ones for sure. I mean, I, mean, I guess when I, when I think back home, we don't, we're not, we're not as like exotic with our taste. It's more like shrimp and exactly. clams and scallops. And we would never see on a street like this either. No, no, you know, no. This is very open, yeah. open air environment. But yeah. Walk in and it's eye candy, man. Yeah, and right across the street we have the Busan International Film Festival, which basically is like a mini market. You know, they they have the Busan Film Festival, International Film Festival every year. Yeah. But in this area, they have a market, and it's called that. So we thought this market was like a souvenir market. You know, it looked very touristic, but it's actually not. It's like oh. a street food market. Yeah. So many street food vendors. So many street food vendors. Like, this is the busiest street food section I've seen in Busan before. Yeah, I mean, yeah. easily like. 50 different street food vendors, a Easy. lot of Korean food. They have like yeah. fried chicken, they have waffles with cream, which looks amazing, yeah. whipped cream. You know what I saw a lot? The tokboki shops, like the spicy yeah. rice cakes. Oh, I, I saw love it. It four or five of those. And they have like super long hand rolls, they have yeah. like hot pot. I mean, all, so man. many delicious things. We're gonna do that another day. Yeah. But yeah, what an amazing day it's been. We visited the longest beach in South Korea. Yeah. Then we went and we had, what was the name of the meal? The Han Chunchik, the Royal Korean Feast. My God, never ending wow. meal. We had one, two, three, I can't even count. Probably like 25 different things. It was really, really epic, really filling. Yeah. We tried some drinks as well. And then we came over here, we saw the fish market, which is really vibrant and it's like smells, the fish are jumping. I mean, it really is cool. And the guys come out and they like put the fish in your face. I mean, really yeah, fun some, adventure there. So some, some of them are really cheeky. They're, they're doing some naughty stuff with the fish. But anyways, uh, and yeah, yeah what, a, what a day, man. And then we came here and that's yeah. a wrap, guys. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been here in beautiful Busan, South Korea, the second largest city in the country. And today I'm gonna to take you to eat some delicious Korean street food here at the Busan International Film Festival Square or Marketplace. This originally was the movie district and then in 1996, they renovated the area in preparation for the first Busan International Film Festival. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna eat a lot of traditional stuff like tteokbokki, mandu, lots of delicious Korean food. Are you guys ready? Let's go eat. As soon as you walk into the market, you start getting this amazing aroma of fish. You can see right here, lots of fish. They have so many delicious things. They got squid, they got like fish pancakes. I mean, the list is never ending. They also have souvenirs. You can see right here, they got wallets. They have belts, lots of belts. So if, you're, if you need a belt, because my boy Sam, his, his pants broke, his button broke. So you just bought a belt right now. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, coconuts. You got some of these things. I don't know exactly what this is right here. Right here, but it looks really delicious. And you have odon, which is basically hot pot. So there's a lot of different things. They got fish sticks. They have, uh, they have like some, some of these pancakes. I mean, it really is a feast on the eyes. And if you're hungry, this is the place to come and eat Korean street food. All right, guys, so we're starting off one of my favorite dishes here in South Korea. It's called duck bokki. It's a mix of things, okay? So the first thing we have is duck, which is a rice cake. It's hard to pick up right there. It's like a finger, right? It's yep. like a finger. Next, we have oden, which is a fish cake. So it's like in hot pot, right? Hot pot fish cake. And then next, we have sundae, sundae yep. which is like a pork sausage, pork blood sausage. So we're gonna start it off with this one, the duck rice cake and it has a super spicy sauce. It looks really, really rich. It looks a lot hotter than the ones I had in, uh, in Seoul. Yeah, it's a more intense red color, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's nice. It feels, like I've said it before, it feels like a, like a nice rice mochi, but it looks like a finger. Yeah. Wow, that was so good. It's so good. It's delicious, man. Like, this is one of my favorite things of all time. I know. Next is the fish cake. Mmm. Dude, that is incredible. I've had the fish cake before, the olden, but I haven't had it with the sauce. Yeah. That just takes it to a, a different stratosphere, man. <laughs> Holy smokes. Super soft, uh, like very uh, sponge feeling to it. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. It absorbs the sauce so well. It does, it does. And then here, we have the sundae. So I love sausage, I like pork. Wait till you try that, man. <laughs> mm, so good. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Has a little bit of rice. Again, another thing I haven't tried with the sauce. This sauce is just like, 
like getting this sauce. I want to like get a cup of the sauce. It's not good. I want to bathe in it. I want to bathe in it. <laughs> <laughs> a little too wild, but no, for real, it's super good, <laughs> super spicy, very nice. And next, I'm gonna try the mandu. Mandu is basically Korean dumplings, pork dumplings. But this one, we asked for some of the sauce to go on top. So I haven't tried this before. I tried the other day. Regular, I like it. And this is actually called gul mandu, which is pan fried mandu or pan fried dumpling. Look at this thing. Oh, it's got to dip some more sauce. Mmm. Oh, yeah. I love how it's a little crunchy in the bottom because it's like a real burnt. Mm, super soft in the middle. It has some veggies, some pork. Wow. The taste of the dumpling is super different from Japan or China. Yeah. Mmm. I don't know what it is, man. They're so plump here. I love these dumplings. Oh my god. Dude. Why is it so good? Why? Yeah. I'm gonna have to have some more. Mmm. <laughs> Unreal. This is super unreal food. Mm. To wash it all down, we have the olden broth. Mm, look at that broth. Super nice, very light, and this is a, basically a paddock cleanser. Yeah. So you drink this after you eat everything, and you go and eat more stuff, right? Oh man. It's a nice fishy broth. That's what it is. Mmm. Dude. Korean street food. Yeah. It's up there with some of the best street food in the world. All right, so the total price was 3,000 for each bowl, so 6,000, so that's $6, roughly $6. Both of us are eating it. I mean, it's a lot of food, and she actually gave us a sundae, which is the, the sausage yeah. free on top. Yeah, I think it's time to go eat some chicken. Let's do it. Let's go. Well, next up, we are getting duck kung jung, which is like Korean fried chicken with a sweet and spicy glaze. It looks like the best popcorn chicken with sweet and spicy glaze of all time. It just looks so crispy and what they do here that's different in Korea that I just learned is they double double fry it. Like it's deep fried twice. So it gives it an extra crunch and she also put some rice cakes on top. Wow, we got a small version. There's a small, medium and large. 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. We got small because we're gonna eat so much today. We don't need to keep filling up on, you know, fried chicken. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. The duck kung jung. Deep fried chicken with sweet and sour sauce. Bam, right Damn. there. Whoa. Whoa. It's so intensely red. Mm. It's a big bite, big bite. Big bite. So sweet. I know. It's so crispy. They deep fry it twice. Mmm. Juices just like burst out. Super fresh chicken. And like Sam was saying, this is the best fried chicken on the planet. I mean, I love my country. Yeah. USA, I love you guys. Yeah. This is better. This is better, this is for better. sure. It's fresher, no steroids. The chicken was literally farmed outside, or like, you know, yeah. obviously on the farm. They butchered it, yeah. and we're eating it. <laughs> we're eating it. The same day. Direct. Oh my God, one more. Mm. It's unreal. I've never had fried chicken this good. Wow. And here we have the delicious rice cake. They eat rice cakes with everything here. <laughs> Mm. Oh, this one's a little harder. Yeah. Mmm. It's actually, I like it. It's small, yeah. not as big as the other one. Not as long as the double cream. The sweet sauce is so freaking good. It's, it really is like a honey glaze, right? Yeah. yeah. Another one? Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> this is like, this is something that I, I don't like at all. I've only tried it, I think, once or twice. Let's see what you think. It's called Bondegi. Okay, Bondegi. Silkworm larva. It looks disgusting. <laughs> it smells disgusting. I'm doing this because Sam said that you guys will love to see me try it. I never try weird, crazy <laughs> at this because in reality, I don't like it. Yeah. So I don't want to eat things I don't like, especially something that's going to upset my stomach. Yeah. And here we have one. We have a small version, we cost 2,000, and it's easy, like 80 little silkworm larvae. <laughs> what do you think? Like, like earth. It's like earth. I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay. It does taste similar to, to worms or crickets, you know? Can you give it a good sniff? No. No? It's not that strong? It smells actually like it was been roasted or something. Okay. <laughs> the spine just popped my mouth. I'm done, your turn. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna try this on your camera. 
Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> you get the, the disgusting juices pop in your mouth. Oh. It's so bad, but it's hard to swallow. And like, I'm already planning, like, we need to get something quickly after this. I don't want this aftertaste. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. It's freaking disgusting. It's so disgusting. Oh. Dang, I saw some roast marshmallow ice cream. I've never tried this. Let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. And I thought this market was small because the other day we saw only a portion of it. It's really, really long. Yeah, and it branches off in yeah. all directions. Yeah, it branches off and that's like oysters. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, oysters. Oh I man. Oh, free. this is the marshmallow. Okay, you want to do this? Yeah. Oh, whoa. He's going to like, he's going to torch it, right? Uh, marshmallow ice cream, uh, uh, vanilla. So what we did is we came to this guy and he has vanilla marshmallow ice cream. He also has strawberry. It costs four thousand, so it's like almost four bucks. It yeah. looks amazing. Sam just had a little bit. I'm not a huge sweet guy, so I'm just gonna take a bite. Oh, it looks so good. Look at that. Yeah, it's got marsh marshmallow on the outer layer and ice cream in the middle. It's pretty good. Oh my god. What do you oh think? God. Mm. Isn't that nice? <laughs> oh sh. <laughs> it's like it's like super fluffy marshmallow, yeah. and inside you have the vanilla. And then there's some chocolate in there as well. Yeah. What do you think, man? Good pack cleanser. It's good stuff, huh? That's all you do. You want some more? Mmm. Mm. My favorite part is the outer marshmallow layer. It's so good. Mmm. Mm. Super random, but here at the end of the market, we have these small, like, little huts, and what's inside are fortune tellers. We we're gonna do it, but unfortunately, none of them speak English, so it wouldn't really make sense for us. But it's really cool, you can get your fortune read right here. Hey, how you doing? And now we're gonna try some seafood. We haven't tried seafood here in Busan yet, and obviously, we're by the water, so we have to try seafood. This city's famous for its seafood, and here we have Karibi, which is Grilled scallop with cheese, also some onions. There's some corn in there. He started off there. We didn't know what he was gonna do. Yeah. He just started like heating it up with a torch. But then he like started spraying the torch, like firefly in the air. He almost burned my camera. I mean, uh, I think my mic's <laughs> a little burnt, but it's cool. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I mean, after that, he pulled it out. He let it like last for a second. He put some of this, like it looks like a sweet and sour sauce. Then he put something else on top, like some herb. Wow, we're jumping in right now. Let's go. Ooh, Ooh pick it up. Oh yeah, that's really good, dude. Oh yes. Oh whoa. Oh man. It's so succulent. What a contrast here. You have delicious scallop and you have all these vegetables. You have the sweet sauce, but then you also have a little bit of the charcoal because they like you burn the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you burn it. Sorry, I guys are posting in this video, man. But yeah, I mean it's super nice. Very different. I've never had a scallop like this, and it's really a giant scallop. Mmm. Whoa. Whoa. I like it. I like the little burnt taste to it. Mmm. And basically, just like. Suck those juices. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get after it. Guys, I'm in love with seafood. I can eat seafood all day. This is very different. It's a good, it's a good way to almost end our meal. It costs three thousand for one. Yeah. Five thousand for two. So you get fit, you get five hundred off if you buy two. So five hundred off each. Yeah. Pretty good deal. Come free, with a friend. Free friend. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Another cool thing here in the market is that we have the handprints of different movie stars. I don't know exactly who's here, but because this is the Busan International Film Festival location, they have these plaques, right? So it feels like the Hollywood Hall of Fame. You know, right here on the bottom, you can see lots of different celebrities and here it says the 12th annual, the 13th annual, the 15th annual, the Busan International Film Festival. So we're ending our street food feast off with some dessert. Here we have a waffle, right, with some whipped cream in the middle. And this is like a waffle ball and Sam was saying that it's like a creamy thing in the middle. I don't know what it is. Let's try this one first. Mmm, mmm. All right, so basically this is like a white bean curd. That's what, it, it's what it tastes like. White bean curd with a nice dough in the middle, very crispy on the outside, nice waffle taste. It's pretty damn good. It is. It's like a one or two biter. Mm. 
and it costs 1,000 yuan yeah. for three of those. And this is 2,000 yuan for one big one. And here we go, the waffle. As you can see, whipped cream, right? Whipped cream right there, whoa. Waffle with whipped cream, Koreans love it. Oh, yeah. It's like a straight up Belgian waffle. Mmm, nice with cream. Very filling. I mean, I would usually eat this for breakfast with some like maple syrup, maybe some whipped cream as well. As a dessert, I don't know. Not my favorite. I'm just not a sweet guy. Yeah, we've had a lot of food in all fairness. <laughs> all right, Stuff, but, man. But it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Right. Well, after eating all that food, I feel, oh, I feel fulfilled. I mean, it was really, really delicious. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk this off by going up to Yangtusan Park, which means Dragon Head Mountain, that's the little translation. There they have over 70 species of trees in 69,000 square meters of land. Oh man, I love this area. This like movie theater area is incredible. So much street food, so many different shops. You got souvenirs. Sam, how are you loving this place? It's incredible, man. Bustling hive of activity. It's a Saturday afternoon. Everyone's out enjoying the space. You have kids, you have families, you have young couples coming out to eat and drink and snack on everything, do some shopping. This place is just popping, man. Let's go to the park. And this is really cool. There's actually an escalator on the street that takes you right up to the entrance of the park. <laughs> so I had no information about this park, but I wanted to come here because, you know, obviously it's one of the places you have to visit when you're in Busan. It's right here in the center. But look at this, this is really cool. So during the Chusan Dynasty, this park and its vicinity were known as the Churyang Owangan, the only place where trade between the Chosun Dynasty and Japan could take place. That is amazing. The Chosun government established facilities inside the area while Donggangbu, modern day Busan, managed and controlled entry into it. So it was the only center for exchange between Chosun and Japan until the 17th and 18th century. After 200 years of existence, in 1876, the Choryong Owan was turned into a guest house for Japanese officials. Wow, we went overboard. We tried so many delicious things at the Busan Film Festival area. That it's like a market yeah. slash street. There's like never ending street food. Easy, like what, 100 stalls? Oh my gosh, like we, we didn't even put a dent. We could no. have probably ate a third of what you can have. I mean, we really wanted to go super authentic Korean because they have yeah, some yeah. other stuff, like some Taiwan stuff. Yeah. They have some, uh, what else you told me, like some Vietnamese stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's some Vietnamese stuff. They had like those spiral potatoes, which you see a lot in Southeast Asia. They had a lot of different stuff, not just Korean. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, my favorite thing was the duck bokki. Duck bokki was amazing, yeah. man. Yeah. That sauce. So good. Next level. So sweet. So sweet. So delicious. So spicy too. So yeah, yeah, no, it, it was it was like sweet and sour with the super pungent spice. Yeah. Incredible. And then yeah, after that we came up here to the park. Yeah. We saw a little bit of the park. I mean we didn't go up to Busan Tower. No, we didn't. But that's like a super mega attraction, you know, observation deck at 120 meters. But you know, we're gonna do it another day. But for now we're gonna let you go. Guys, if you love this video, thumbs up, comment below. Subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Busan, South Korea. Peace! Hey, what's up everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Busan, South Korea. I'm so excited because today I'm gonna to be attending a Yago game, which is a baseball game. This is the number one spectator sport in all of Korea. I'm so excited. We got tickets early, so we got our tickets. It's actually sold out now, so don't try to get here right before the game. It won't happen. Try to get here either in the morning or buy them online. Here it's a full experience, so you get here, First thing you gotta do is go inside in one of the shops and buy yourself either a jersey, a hat. After that, you can go buy some street food, you can actually buy some alcohol, you can buy some water, and then we go inside and we sit down and we're gonna get some beers. It's a full experience, the crowd goes wild. We're st sitting in general admission, which yeah. is like the best place to sit because obviously it's where the wild fans are. So you guys ready? Let's go experience a baseball game in South Korea. Dude, so excited to watch this baseball game. We are gonna be rooting for the home team. They are the Busan 
Lotte Giants. Something that's kind of fascinating is that the teams are actually named after companies in Korea. So Lotte is a really big company. And so Lotte is obviously the sponsor of the Giants. So let's go in and see if we can get a Giants hat. Here in the store, they have lots of jerseys. They have t-shirts, they have hats. They have a lot of stuff for kids. I mean, most of the stuff is for kids. The only thing for adults are the jerseys. I mean, these jerseys are pretty amazing. The only thing is they're $91, $91 for this. I mean, it's pretty awesome, but personally, I mean, I'm, I don't really want to spend $100 because, you know, I'm not that big a fan. I mean, I'm not a huge baseball fan, so I mean, I'm coming to one game, I'm not going to spend that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a hat. I'm going to put on this hat right here. Check this out. This is 40 bucks. So, I mean, it's half price, right, compared to the jersey? The thing is, I wear hats a lot now, so I'd rock this a lot. So why not? I love the colors. I love the way the logo is there. Really cool. And I think Sam's getting the same one. Yeah, dude. Love it. Loving it. Let's do it. I mean, 78, so, so it's basically 75 bucks? Something like that, yeah. I mean, we didn't really want to spend 180 on jerseys, right? Giants. Can you... Uh... Love it. We got our hats, and now what we're going to do is we're going to get some delicious street food. The street food outside of the stadium is dried squid. Yeah, it's called Ojingo. It's unreal. It's, it's massive, man. Wait till you see it. We're going to get a whole one, probably share it, and then we're going to go in, and we're going to drink beer during this game. Let's go. Let's do it. And I didn't mention, they also sell soju. They sell water. They yep. sell lots of other things, but the like the thing you have to try is a squid. I mean, I saw pictures of people trying it online. I was like, yeah. You already have a mat. You already have a mat. Go up some of that. It's warm, dude. Check out that squid. It was a big piece. He kind of burnt it up and squashed it into a cup. And then we've got ice cold cuss. Green beer. All right, so let's try the squid, right? Yeah. We have to. <laughs> How do you how do you bite this? <laughs> it's really chewy. Don't drink too much. <laughs> My advice. It's super chewy, dude. You gotta bite hard. Dude, I can't bite it. Here, try to rip off a little piece, like a tentacle. A tentacle? Yeah. Like that? Try it, yeah. It's like a barnacle here, man. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Crazy that was tough. Crazy tough. Crazy tough. No, I don't, I don't think it's edible, man. <laughs> got it? Oh, dude, you got it. There you go. <laughs> it's too tough, man. It's, it's super local, man. You'd never eat that back home, right? right. <laughs> Beer? Beer. That's what I need. That was whack. <laughs> We'll get something a little more normal inside, like pizza and stuff. <laughs> what is that, dude? Yeah. Why would people eat that? That's like <laughs> super rubber. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try it again because Sam's convincing me that the tentacles are better than the, the rubber head. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> It really is like chewing on a tire. <laughs> you can't convince me, Sam. Come <laughs> back. Come back, bro. Come back. Lotte Giants. What's that, Steam? Oh my god. This beer is good. This beer is amazing. Ready for the game? Ready for the game. Let's, Let's go. go. So, what happens is you need to look at your ticket. It tells you what gate you need to go in. In our case, we're general admission, kind of, I think, outfield possibly. So we need to go up to the top level and then we can get in. There's actually a ramp right here to go up yeah. to the top level or the second level. And that's also where you buy tickets. Again, I highly recommend buying your tickets a few days early or online. All right, so now we're about to enter security. So we're gonna put away our cameras and we'll see you inside. All right, so as soon as we passed security, they gave us jerseys. Can you believe it? Look we, at it, man. We it's didn't awesome. spend $91. Dude. I would have been so mad. Dude, this is the best. Like, we got the hats, we got the jerseys. Like, we, we're, we're official fans, man. They better win tonight. We're Busanis. Busanis. Go Lotte. Let's go. We actually, we have to go up to the third level. Our gate is gate 57. And here we go. Here we go. Let's go. I can't wait. It's going to be epic. It's going to be like the uh, the players are going to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part about this is look at the view. Whenever a sports owner puts a stadium outside of a city, they don't get it. This is amazing. Check this out. Incredible. This is such an amazing spot right now. I know. The crowd is here is crazy. No, we got to yell. Yell. Yeah. yell. The bases are loaded right now. Let's find our seats. We're 11. Let's go. Let's go.
So the way it works here with the beer is that you're gonna see a lady passing by. She's gonna say beer, beer, beer. You say yeah, I want one. It's four thousand, so it's four bucks. You got your beer. Oh, and here we go. I don't know what this is. Cloud. Nice light beer. Oh man, with this, the temperature right now is amazing. It was really hot today, and now it's super cool. The atmosphere is amazing. You can see everybody's here. Everyone's uh, getting into it. I don't know if they're singing, but it's, it sounds cool. And basically what's happening right now is that it's, uh, what is it, the bottom of the fourth? And uh, the, the home team is at bat, and there's one person on base, but the whole team is killing it right now. It's 5-0. I know. We're, the we're the atmosphere is great. They're definitely winning tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so friends yeah. back, yeah. yeah. Come back. It's amazing, man. The atmosphere is electric. You won't find sports fans more passionate than Koreans. They get into it like in a way that I never seen in North America, even in Canada and the U.S. The fans aren't quite like this. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, like 95% of the stadium is for the team, right? And every time they're at bat, they're cheering. Like they're cheering. Like it's fighting. Fighting. They're saying, "Listen, fighting!" fighting. When the other team is at bat, it's like crickets in here. Crickets, crickets. <laughs> Don't give a shit. Oh! oh We've been a little unlucky because before we got here, they already scored five runs. Yeah. Since then, it's been a little bit of a drought. This is a party, man. Yeah, the yeah. only problem here where we're sitting, we're sitting like, we're sitting in the middle. Yeah. So it's like, if you want to get out to get food, right. mission. You have to do it in between the innings. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna go get some food and maybe another drink. Oh, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. So on our level, there's a little food court that has tteokbokki, and then there's also a 7-Eleven. They're both really packed, so we're gonna go downstairs and see if we find some like fried chicken or something else. I want something delicious, like super delicious, super fatty, and maybe another good beer. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely need another beer. I man. think they only have Cloud, right? Cloud, that's the brand. Yeah, it's maybe, like the sponsor. Yeah, we, need, we need more though. We need more. <laughs> so we're gonna get some Kung Junk, some Korean fried chicken. It's the ultimate baseball food. You gotta get it greasy, so it washes down with the beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are getting some Dokbuki to go along with our deep fried chicken. And this is like a classic Korean street food snack. Can't wait to try it. Spicy rice cakes, guys. With gochujang, red pepper sauce. And they also have like these super thin pancakes, but they're like fish pancakes. Yeah. We're not trying them. You want to get some more squid? <laughs> I don't know. That squid doesn't look edible. No. It's like really, really tough. Yeah. It's funny because this is like straight up street food. Yeah. Uh, At the concession. Game. Yeah, it's a street food concession here. And then it's a uh, duck bulky. Then how do you say? That's all one. All right, some some KFC. Some KFC, Korean fried chicken. No, I'm joking, Korean fried chicken. <laughs> mm. This is right. It's spicy. Is it? Mm -hmm. Much spicier than the one we had this afternoon? The other one is more sweet. Okay. It's spicy. Dude, it's like double deep fried. Yeah. Super rich, super juicy. But they do it so well. Let me get some double green now. So double green has both fish cake and the rice cake. And I'm gonna get both. And it's still super hot. Super, <laughs> super, super hot. I know, we didn't get a bag with that. I had to carry it up here. My hands were burning. <laughs> spicy. Freaking delicious, spicy. Mm. The sauce is actually like, almost like sweeter and creamy oh, in wow. a way. Oh wow. It's awesome. Oh man. my god. And what we're doing is we're eating it here because it's such a mission to go back upstairs, go through everything and eat it there. Yeah, yeah. Just eat it here, relax, enjoy. We're gonna go back upstairs, get some beers. Yeah, but for now, we're eating we, some fried chicken. We attack. <laughs> the food here in Korea does not stop amazing me. Even though we've eaten this multiple times, I mean, it's really amazing seeing in places like this, like in a baseball stadium, you know, for me, Stadiums never have good food. No. Never. And it's super overpriced. Yeah, yeah. This isn't so bad. What was the price? Do you remember? Super reasonable. 4000 for the uh, dog bogey, 10000 for the chicken. So 10 bucks. 14 bucks. 
Seven bucks each to have a meal. And beers are each four. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you easily, in America, you spend three times. Sure, sure. Easy. Easy. Oh man, I'm just not stop with this. That's some four US dollars, big, medium sized bowl, tons of the gochujang sauce, lots of the rice cakes, lots of the fish cakes. Mmm. I'm in spicy heaven right now. Love this. And I love this chicken. Look how big this is. Giant. Giant. Man, chicken. no steroids, no preservatives, nothing in here. Whatever I'm saying, I don't care. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I want to watch the baseball game, but I want to eat more. <laughs> so good. I am. It's so big. It's such a big piece. It takes a while to chew it. Whoa! Whoa! That's my buddy here, super nice guy. He just gave me a bottle of soju, which is Korean vodka. Basically, it's like a distilled sweet potatoes. Do yeah. gumbe. <laughs> it's a strong drink. It's not that bad. It's like 20%. But if you drink this whole bottle yourself, you'd be lit. The seventh inning is starting and everybody's singing. Check this out. Everybody's blowing them up and then like tying them up. I don't know what they're doing with this. What is this? <laughs> We had to actually call this guy from far away. I was like, hey, come here, come yeah, here. Yeah, but come he, has, here. he has a great eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, whoa, 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 that's the guy. And it costs four each, right? Four thousand each? Yeah, four thousand each. Cheers. Yo. Gambe, gambe, gambe. Gambe, What a baseball game is about. Drinking some beers, having some fried chicken. Yeah, having some dog boogie. Chilling my fellow Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were gonna leave soon, but now it's like, yeah, it's stay here. We gotta stay. Oh we gotta stay God. and see what happens. That's crazy. Five nothing, and now they gave up the lead. Five five. The home team. He already missed that. He, he, he dove for the ball. He missed it. It's such a bad move. And, oh, and then he dove too early. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so quick update. Uh, bases, we have two bases. So first and second have a player, right? I don't yeah. know what that's called. Two out. Uh, two on. Yeah. Two okay. on, two out. Two on, two out. So, so if this guy gets a hit, maybe we score a run. And if he strikes out, we're on to the next inning. Oh! I don't know, this is not looking good. Oh! Oh! That sucks, man. It sucks, it sucks. He almost hit, he got, almost got a hit, but then everybody's out. We did it, baseball Woo! in Korea, man. Th that was an experience on its own. I'm not a baseball fan. I oh, have man. only gone to a few baseball games in my life, and that was over two decades ago when the Marlins won the World Series. I actually went to the playoffs during that. Oh. But yeah, I mean, this is an experience. Come here, you enjoy, yeah. you chant. You, you cheer, eat, you, you eat, eat well, you drink oh, well. Dude, the food's epic, the epic. beers are good, they Don't let you up. Yeah, that bokki. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Beer. No squid. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all the people who gave us things. We had chips. They were giving grapes. We soju. Giving soju. The friendliest people. 
Unbelievable, I'll never forget this, man. Yeah, and we left in the ninth inning. Uh, it's tied right now. We don't know the outcome. It's okay, though. I mean, we really want to beat the crowds. If you come out when everybody's coming out, you're not getting a taxi. We've been up for 17 hours. Yeah, we've been up for a long time. But guys, when you come to South Korea, you have to come to a baseball game. It's a yeah. must-do. I highly recommend booking tickets a few days in advance. Yeah. Don't just come here and try to get tickets. They will be sold out. These people are fanatics, for real. <laughs> no, for real, for real, <laughs> for real. Well, guys, if you love this video, Thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Korea. Peace. Peace. Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, sunny Busan, South Korea. Today it's Sunday morning, and on Sundays here in Korea, most places are closed. But we found this place that serves breakfast 24 hours, so they serve food 24 hours a day, and it looks like they have something called bapsan, which is like a huge spread of food. I know it's centered around fish, some meat, like a soup, and then lots of sides, always sides. Whenever you order anything in Korea, the main dish comes, and then you get plenty of sides, all veggies. And actually, check this out, come here, come here. I think, I think this is what we're ordering. Wow. I'm not 100% sure. Look at all that food. I do, it looks crazy good. And then after this, we're gonna go to Busan Tower, which is right at the heart of the city. And from there, we're gonna get epic views of all of Busan. Let's go inside and let's eat. Wow, look at this. The feast of feast for breakfast, Babsam. I mean, we have like 12 different dishes here. The main three dishes are in the middle, right? And then you have all the sides. And it's just like never ending. The only thing that comes twice is the rice and the seaweed soup. You know, obviously two people. And this only costs nine won, so like eight dollars per person, eight US dollars. This is insane. I've never seen a breakfast like this. In Korea, this is the first time I've tried something like this. There's so many things to try. Everything looks so different, so many flavors. So let me just quickly tell you what this is, right? So we have like glass noodles right here. We have a seaweed salad. Sorry, not seaweed salad, seaweed soup. <laughs> uh, we got rice, right, just regular rice. We have fish cakes with some super spicy sauce. Next to it we have a rice drink, okay? And then we have this is like roots, creamy roots with uh, with mushrooms. Here we have some vegetables. Yep. Next we have the main three dishes, right? So this one's like a tofu soup with mushrooms and herbs. Super delicious, looks super delicious. We got fish with squash. Wow, the sauce looks incredible. Then here we have pork, spicy pork with some onions. Next we have the spring onion pancake. Looks incredible, super green. Then we have the spicy kimchi. Here we have a salad with black sesame sauce. We have two sauces here. And, and then we have all the lettuces, right? So we have seaweed, lettuce, and what you do is you basically, I'm gonna show you, but you grab some of this, mix it with this, and you eat it. Okay, wow. when I start, Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna start with some of the glass noodles, guys. Whoa, whoa. It's a little hard to grab with the chopsticks, man. These chopsticks are like slippery. Yeah, they're slippery noodles in general. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Very nice. A little greasy. Mmm. Nothing else in there except a little bit of like carrots and stuff, a little bit of veg. I love it. But yeah, it's Korean style glass noodles. Next up, we're gonna try some of the fish cakes. I wanna try the fish cakes. Oh man, spicy. I need some spicy for breakfast. Oh yeah. Mmm, not too spicy. Very tender. Oh wow, this is fantastic. Mmm, super soft. Dude, the sauce is amazing. Not too spicy, just the right amount of kick. Sorry guys, I, I really love the fish cakes. <laughs> like all day. Mm. Yeah, you gotta do that like that. You gotta mix it with the rice. Now I'm gonna jump into the soup. A seaweed soup. Oh wow. Nice soup. Super like cloudy in there. Mmm. Yeah, so it's not cold, it's not hot. It's like room temperature. Oh I love the seaweed. Get a bunch of seaweed. Mm. So there is some noodles in there, right? Super light, very refreshing. This is like the perfect thing after a hangover. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have one. <laughs> Mr. we're gonna try some of these mushrooms with the root. I thought it was noodles, but Sam was saying it's root. Mmm, mmm. 
Dude, the roots are amazing. And they're cold. The mushroom is very like wild, like it's a wild mushroom, very like long. And I love the crunchiness in the in the root. That's the best part about the roots. It's like it's very crunchy, it's healthy, and it's awesome. Next we got some of the veg. Have a little bit of that. I don't know what that is. Mmm, super green. Very green. <laughs> 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 so, what to say about that? It's, it's very healthy. It's very healthy. Yeah. So that's basically it. Next, grab some kimchi all the way over here. Oh, nice. My favorite thing in Korea. Mmm. Mmm. Nice and spicy. Dude, it's so good. If you guys don't like cabbage, don't come to Korea. It's all about cabbage. Romantic cabbage. Ooh. You always get that. Whoa, this was hot, dude. Yeah, this is one of the hotter ones we've had. <coughs> oh, man. So I'm gonna try this one. This is the black sesame dressing on a salad. Oh, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I love black sesame. So, move it here. Mmm. Super sweet. Black sesame always reminds me of like a little bit of chocolate, right? It has like something, like a feeling of chocolate. The overload of sauce right there. Oh, <laughs> it's like a lot, but it's really <laughs> nice with the lettuce. Mm, but I think I have to change the flavor now and get some of the pancake. Break that guy. All right, there we go. Korea, they love their pancakes. Veg pancakes, fish pancakes, lots of pancakes. Mmm. Dude, I love the batter. You guys bring onions throughout. That's delicious. A little cold really good. Next up we have the three main dishes. I'm gonna start with the pork, spicy pork. What you do is you grab a piece of lettuce, right? Go like this. Don't let it drip too much. Then put it into the sauce. I'm gonna go with this red one. Just wanna see how spicy it is. Put it in. I might have gotten too much. You're not supposed to overload it like that. <laughs> so you wrap it up and you put it all in your mouth. One bite, okay? Oh wow. Mmm. Dude, that pork is super buttery. Mmm. It's also not spicy. Not the onions and whatever they bathe that in, like whatever they cooked it in, super yummy. It's 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 definitely savory. It's not sweet at all. It's a little bit of spice. Dude, but it's so good. I'm just gonna have it alone. Just a little bit. Wow, look at this. Whoa. You know what? I'm not having it alone. I gotta get something else. Maybe try it with this seaweed. Oh wow, what is this? One go. Mm. Crazy contrast in flavors. You have the sea and you had the land. Boom! Surf and turf. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, the seaweed was like, like, I was eating the sea right there. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna try some of the fish, right? Oh, this is the hardest thing for me because I hate bones. So you have to get in here and be very careful. Look at this. This is fish is amazing, but I already see tons of bones, tons. So you got the squash. Maybe I should try the squash alone. Mmm. Wow, it just fell apart, man. That was like creme brulee, man. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have it. Ugh, lots of bones. I'll try it. Mmm. Light sauce. Mmm. Very salty. Pretty good, man. I didn't get any bones in there. I was very lucky. I usually get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> like usually I'm there, I'm like, oh, I'm just spitting it all out. Horrible. And you gotta always be careful with the bones, guys. You don't wanna go to the hospital. It's really, it's really scary. Next up, we have this amazing soup. And as you can see, there's like a piece of crab in there. Right, it's a crab. I'm gonna put the crab to the side. Get some of the tofu and some of the, right there, the mushrooms. Look at that. It was dense, but at the same time it's absorbed all that flavor. It's a little hot, not too hot. It's more like a vegetable broth. Mm, and the mushrooms, man, the mushrooms here, like the vegetables in Korea are just outstanding. And I think the only thing I have to try next is some of this. I didn't try some of this rice drink. See a lot of grains of the rice right there. I guess this could be a hangover cure right here. <laughs> Not my favorite, but you know, this is a country of rice, so you have to try it. And wow, 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 wow. Damn, I'm gonna just dive into the rest of this alone. 
Wow, dude. So much food. So much so food. So much food, so little time. David, this breakfast has been insanely good. Like, I've never had a feast like this in Korea before, including all the years I lived and traveled here. Unbelievable. My two favorite dishes are the chopche, the glass noodles here, made out of sweet potato. Mmm. That's got such a nice texture, and they're a little bit greasy as they go down. Super delicious. And my second favorite dish is jeopokum, okay? The spicy Korean pork. So you just grab some with the onions. As, as, as you showed David, you know, you gotta grab it with a, with a wrapper, lettuce wrapper, dunk it into the samjang sauce, right, like that. Roll it up. It's the best one biter in Korea. Mm. Amazing breakfast. If you come to South Korea, you've got to try this. This is just a feast of feast. Everything is super tasty, super healthy. What a great way to start the day. Dude, that was the mother of all breakfast feasts. And now that we've had our food, it's time to go to Busan Tower. It's in a beautiful location, kind of up a little bit on a hill. And we're gonna have views of the entire city. Yeah, this is the place to go if you wanna get epic views. It's an observation deck, 120 meters high. And this restaurant that we just visited is in the center of the city, the downtown area. So there's two places in the city, right? The part that's next to Busan Station, which is like the really, really central area. And you have downtown, which is more, you know, businesses, residential. And yeah, we're gonna go over there now. It's gonna take us like 15 minutes, hopefully less. Just depends how much traffic there is. But it's Sunday, it's not so bad. And dude, I love this city. It's amazing. Like, I really love it. It's so different from Seoul. So different, totally different vibe, port vibe. Uh, people are, I mean, I'll have to say it, people are more friendly here. It's uh, it's just a different, you know, usually the second cities of every country tend to be a bit friendlier than the capitals. All right, so as soon as we got here to the tower, I saw a souvenir shop and I came inside and they have traditional masks. They have this huge one you can see behind me, but I got like two of the most traditional ones. This white one over here and then another one's wood. It cost me, each one was like 30 and 40 and actually, you know, I negotiated and I got it for 60, right? So six, 60, 10,000 off. Yeah, 10,000 off, so it's like $55, two amazing masks. And yeah, I mean, this is something I collect, so I always look for the mask, and look, I got it, finally. Super happy with it. And here we are, right in front of Busan Tower. The souvenir shop's right here. Busan Tower is right up there. So we have to take these stairs and go up there. Let's go, Sam. I didn't mention it earlier, but Busan Tower is located inside Yongson Park, which means Dragon Head Park. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's Dragon Head Park. It's a 69,000 square meter park, and they have over 70 species of trees. So you can see lots of trees. Whew. Bit of a hike. I think we're almost there. See the tower here? How did we get there? Oh man, I'm out of breath. And that's it, that's Busan Tower. Let's go see what it costs to go up to the observation deck. I'm sure it's affordable here in Korea. The sites are usually really affordable. If you were to go up to like, I don't know, somewhere like the Empire State Building or something, it's gonna cost you like 30 or 40 bucks. This, not so expensive. Oh wow, dude, it's sick. Nice views over the city. Behind us to the left might be that colorful area. Yeah, I think so. I think wow. Think so. Wow, so cool. Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, yeah. two, two people? Yeah. All right. Just only ticket or do you need any combo? 8,000 each, yeah. right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that means 6,000 Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Right. That's affordable. It's like $7 each. Good deal. Let's go. Hello. Hello. Let's go. Hello. Good deal. Thank you. So as soon as you enter, there's a little gift shop. You just follow the directions. There's an observation deck this way. Give them your your ticket, and here we go. Ticket, please. Together. Yeah, together. Dude, this is cool. It is really cool. This this waiting area is like just got like a floating screen, and yeah, we're I think we're the only people going up at the moment. It's yeah. pretty amazing. So it's it's great. There's no one here. I mean, it's like very intimate in a way. Yeah. Right here, this like screen. It feels like I'm in the ocean in a way. I know. <laughs> it makes me feel a little dizzy, to be honest. <laughs> wow. How fast is it? As soon as you exit the elevator, you're hit with all this light. Wow! Look at these windows. Huge windows in this circular observation deck. I mean, you see the entire city. You see the port. Just beautiful. The sun is out right now. And over here, you see the mountains, lots of skyscrapers, lots of boats. Whoa, cool. And then you have another like mini souvenir shop here. 
Hey, oh, you can you can sit here and just chill. Oh, this is cool. Wow, look at that. This city is gorgeous. This city really reminds me of some uh, place like Rio, just because of all the mountains. And it's just it's so vast and so big. So many buildings. So colorful. And right under us, obviously, is the park, so it's really green. That's a whole other city across the bridge. We haven't even been over there. It's like the port. <laughs> Lots of ships. I'm sure the seafood over there is incredible. And yeah, I mean, this is a place you have to visit when you come to Busan for sure. Dude, what a view from up here. This is like the perfect strategic location. You can see the city in all directions. On the one side, you've got mountains and, uh, and high-rise towers. On the other side, you've got the beach, you've got the port, you've got the sea, you've got fishing boats, and you also have the fish market. So, I mean, it's a very impressive city. Definitely come here if you want to get like the best vantage point in terms of the overall view of the entire city. Wow, what a morning, guys. So we had an epic, huge, monstrous breakfast. That was insane. It was insane. The, the biggest Korean breakfast ever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was freaking delicious. I loved the kimchi, the the super delicious pork with the lettuce wrap. That was my favorite too, my man. Favorite. Oh man, we gobbled that all up. The chop chai <laughs> was good. Oh man, everything was good to be honest. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> and then yeah, right, right after breakfast, we came over here to Busan Tower, 120 meter high observation deck. It's the best place to go if you want to see Busan from the sky. I mean, it's sure. really incredible. The city from there is just beautiful. It just makes you want to explore more of Busan. Like, it, it make, you realize just how big it is and it's yeah. like, wow, the scale, especially the port area, it just keeps sprawling everywhere. Yeah, I had no idea it was oh, that unbelievable. large. Unbelievable, same here. That really surprised me. So guys, if you love this video, <laughs> please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Busan, South Korea. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful sunny Busan, South Korea. Today I have an exciting day for you guys. We're here at the Daejeon-D Resort Park on an island right off of the coast of the downtown area. And here, it's, it's really amazing. It's a natural park, beautiful area. There's temples, there's a lighthouse, there's an observation deck, and there's also some amazing seafood. There's actually clam tents right here, right on the beach. I'm so excited, it's like a clam barbecue. They also have scallops, they have mussels, they have beer, they have soju. Are you guys ready? Let's go eat and then explore the park. Let's go. Hi, Audrey. Oh, hi. Sam, Sam. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to, well, meet, nice you. to meet you. I nice always you. watch your Pleasure. videos. Uh -oh. No yeah. way, no way. Yeah. For real? Yeah. I'm excited. We just met some super nice people who watch their videos. They're from India, but living in Suwon in, in Korea. It's a city south of, uh, south of Seoul. And um, yeah, man, I've been building up an appetite. I thought after the huge breakfast, maybe I'm not going to be so hungry, but I actually am. Let's go eat. Let's go. And here we are, once you get to the bottom where the beach is, here we have all of these tents. Clams, clams, clams galore. Let's go inside and eat some delicious Korean seafood. Okay, so we walked around for a little bit and we found this place. The lady came outside and she sort of gave us a deal. We're getting an assortment of seafood, so lots of different types of clams. You can see this lady just started pulling stuff out. I've never seen most of these before. I mean, they're so different, like orange, yellow. As soon as she cuts it, it like pops open. It squirts water. They squirt water. <laughs> I mean, it's so amazing. And we're spending around 60, so like $55 for a huge, the large portion, huge yeah, we're barbecue. Share it. We're gonna Seafood share it. barbecue. I think so. I'm not entirely sure if it's raw or if it's grilled. No, I think we put it on the grill. Oh! Oh, yeah. oh, oh. wow, what's that? Oh! Dude. Oh, oh, oh man. The way this place works is as soon as you get to the restaurant, you just tell them what you want. It's either an assortment or you just choose, you know, one thing like clams or you can go with some of the other, you know, sea creatures there. I mean, there's so <laughs> many exotic things that I've never seen before. And then, you know, there's two different dining areas. There's the one by the water, which is a few tables. And then there's this like traditional uh, seating inside where she's actually, you know, cutting up everything and cooking everything. This right here is our appetizer, which are mussels. They look super delicious. We got some veggies, we got some sauces. And the first things first, I gotta clean my hands. I've shaken way too many hands today, so definitely don't wanna get sick over doing the wrong thing. Yeah, when you eat with your hands, like I can eat with chopsticks, but it's gonna be way easier with my hands, right? Yeah. All right, clean, clean, clean. Let's start off with the mussels. Oh, I love mussels. Look at this, bam. Just gonna dip this into the hot sauce right there. Oh my God. So fresh, man. So fresh, so succulent. 
It's delicious. This is the reason why we came to get super fresh Korean seafood. I've never dipped it into red sauce before. It's super good. It's a little hot. It's like it's like a sweet and sour but spicy. Mm. So right here we have carrots and cucumber. I'm gonna dip that as well. Mm. Fresh vegetables. All good in Korea. Cucumber's not my favorite, but I'll eat it. Mm. You can see you got soju, which is like the Korean vodka, basically sweet potatoes, 20% alcohol. We're good with that. We don't want to get like really <laughs> drink something hard like that. So we're going with cast, cast beer, gambe. Gambe, bro. Loving that Korean beer, nice and light. Mm, very nice. All right, let's enjoy it before the, the main course gets here. All right, here's our seafood extravaganza. This is all raw. Everything here is raw. I don't know what half these things are. I know these are clams. I know that's octopus. They literally killed it and it came here and it was alive. It was moving. So it was dead, but I mean, it's still moving. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Had a little life left in its body. Yeah, a little scary. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't eat this. I mean, a lot of things here. This is another like, it looks like a big oyster that she popped it open and pulled it out. This one, I don't know what that is either. And this is like another type of clam, right? So I'm gonna start with what I know. You know what? I'm gonna start with this guy. Wow. So it's basically raw octopus. Whoa. Mmm. Dude, it's super fresh. <laughs> it's a little chewy. Obviously, it hasn't been cooked, so I mean, it's just straight up the octopus how he is. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh my oh god. My, oh man, look how long that goes. I don't know if I can eat the whole thing like that. Hold on, let me break this up. That's too much. All right, you know what? Let me, let me move on to the next one. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I remember. It's still you, moving. You can try some of these in the, in the red sauce, too. It'll give it more flavor. Oh yeah, you could? Yeah, this one right here is called gochujang sauce. Put a little squirt on some of those for some more flavor. All right, so let me grab another piece of this. A little bit. Mmm. Good. Mmm. No, it's tough. That's a little hot. It almost like ketchup, but a little spicy. Yeah. And then next up, we got clam. So this one, I know what it is. This is a straight up clam. So here we go. Get in here. Grab some of that, super fresh. Look at that, they chopped it up a little bit. Like that, just dip it. Straight to the mouth. That's not a clam, I got something else. Okay. The clam is under it. <laughs> well, that was tough. That was a tough one? Mmm, clam is delicious. Dude. Dude, I thought it like grabbed onto me. <laughs> what the hell was oh that? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Be careful. You gotta chew these really you gotta, well. You gotta really chew them, man. <laughs> Something Sam was telling me is you gotta be really careful with the octopus because, you know, as soon as they bring it, it's moving and the tentacles can actually suck onto your tongue or the side of your cheek. <laughs> careful. Yeah, remember that tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try this with a different sauce, see what it tastes like. Whoa. It's really tough. Like, really tough. How many of these for later? That's a real deal. Yeah, it's like a real, what is this, an oyster? It looks like pudding, you know? It looks wow. like, a, like a mix between an oyster and a clam. I don't even know what it is, it's yellow. Okay. Mm. That tastes like the sea, bro. It's like, <laughs> just drinking the ocean right there. Mm, <laughs> super soft, so succulent. And then the best thing to do is get some of this, right? Put some of the sauce into it, like a little bit. And then Slurps up. Whoa, <laughs> salty as hell. I think this is clams. I mean, yeah. there's a big assortment of seafood here. Things that are just so wild. Oh, careful, you might break a tooth. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> is that a little too fresh? <laughs> I hope I'm gonna be okay later. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I don't know. It's super soft, so it's gonna be better than the last thing. Yeah. The softer, the better. When it's too tough. Mm. Oh my god. It's like a big muscle. Wow, that was delicious. That was like the muscle we had earlier, but a giant version, yellow. Mmm, dude. This is like real seafood. I've never had seafood like this. This is so, yeah. The freshest. I'm gonna of the flush fresh. down that stuff. Yeah. 
I mean, you don't. You guys don't have to do all this. You can just go straight clams if you want. Yeah. It's probably the best suggestion. Clams. Yeah. That's it. But we're doing you know, we're this. Here. We're doing this for you guys. Yeah, and this this guy. Look, they're still moving. Oh, they're still freaking moving. My God. That's scary. Oh. It's like I'm eating a worm from the sea. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Your face says it all. I don't have to talk about that one. So she's telling me to put this one in the red sauce. It looks like oh, a, okay. This is another hard one though. It's tough. Mm. It's nice. A bit of different flavor. Mm. They're all like basically thick muscles. Okay. You know, she wants me to put the octopus into the sauce. Whoa, look, oh my god, you have to see this. Whoa, it's alive, it's alive. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's moving. <laughs> it's, it's stuck, he's stuck. Yeah, look, that's what they do in your mouth. You gotta, like, dude, you have to chew that. You gotta be really careful, this gets care stuck to your throat. Chew that, chew that, attack it. Mm -hmm. You, know what, dude? you gotta pulverize that until it's nothing. <laughs> good, good. That was no, that was delicious with that, bro. Yeah. With that, yeah. What am I missing here? That was, that was, that was too crazy. <laughs> what an experience. Oh my god. All right, David. We've sure been having an interesting time with this meal. Some uh, some things we've never tried before, most definitely. Also some things that uh, maybe I will try again soon. But this is one item that I did like. Uh, pepper paste sauce, bathe it in there. Mm. What's so nice about that one is just, it has a smooth, soft texture, meaning that some of these are very chewy. This is probably one of the softest items. Mm. I dig it back, that's actually not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> After this is pretty strong, but anyways. Dude, cheers, Gombe. Cheers. The freshest seafood in Korea. And they brought us some complimentary bokumbap. Ooh, that's hot, mm. I just touched that. So they fried up some rice, some seaweed in there, a little bit of seafood. Mm. Oh wow. That's delicious. Makes up for the rawness of the seafood platter. Which neither of us, I can say, at least for me speaking personally, that's a one and done. I'm glad I tried it. Don't need to have that again. <laughs> it's a really nice way to end the meal. We'll definitely finish the pan. We'll scrape the pan clean. And um, now, yeah, guys, seafood in Korea. This is the best part. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. Dude, I never had it before. No, no. Oh my god, look at this dude. Oh my god. Thank you. So here in the clam tent, you have to come to number five. That's their tent. Number five. Right, number five. Number, number changing. Number changing, ah, oh, okay, okay. Well, it was number five today, so it's the fifth one on the left. And yeah, this is it. This is the, the clam tent, it's really cool here. I won't lie, it wasn't my favorite seafood lunch ever. Um, it probably is one, one of the wildest ones. I mean, it's super exotic. But yeah, I mean, this is it. We're gonna go up to see the park and see all the attractions up there. Gotta hike back up 150 meters, let's go. Oh my gosh, the struggle's real. I don't know if it's just because we ate, or it's so hot, or whatever, or just the fact we're going up a hill, but uh, yeah, man, I need to get in better shape. <sighs> yeah, it's 150 meters back to the spot where we just started from. Whew, I'm like, I'm definitely out of shape right now. That hike wasn't that bad. 150 meters, took us like three minutes. Now we're getting to the entrance of the park. You can see lots and lots of tourists here. <sighs> wow, so many people. There's a lot of shade here, a lot of trees. Sam, you feeling good? I'm tired, but yeah, let's power on. Let's go, let's keep going. Dude, the breeze, that's a lifesaver. It just, like, it's only started to hit from this point on. Like, when we were going up the hill, we were in the sun, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can't handle this. 
and there's actually a train that takes you around if you want to take it. It's called the Newbie Train. Yeah. And yeah, this is like the station right here. Yeah. I noticed I, while, while we were using the toilets, I just checked the information. It's 3,000 won for an adult, so less than $3 if you want to do it. And I'm guessing it just takes you around in this circle. I don't know yeah. if it stops, but we're just going to do it by foot. We want to explore and see everything there is to see. Right, our first stop is Gyu Myeongsa Temple. It's just a tiny little temple and basically it was built to help prevent people from committing suicide. So a noble cause and we're just gonna go check it out. And as you can see, it's a small building. You can hear like Bo Buddhist chanting. Yeah. And there's a Buddha here. There's lots of flags. Some bells. Yeah. yeah, lots of flags. Lots of flags from different countries. You got Turkey, Great Britain, America. You have this beautiful dragon statue with a little fountain. And that's it. Wow, no, I, I, dude, the Buddhas inside the, the plant right there are awesome. You saw that? Right there inside the plant. The best part about it is the music. Let's continue our tour. And here we have the Southport Viewing Point. Wow. Wow. Endless ships. Busan. Look at the mountains. Busan, baby. It looks good at every angle. We've seen it from a lot of different vantage points today, man. So the walk isn't 20 minutes. A little longer than that. Maybe it's like 20 if you don't stop at all to see anything. But the best part about this place and where we are is that we're right next to the ocean. So you have this incredible breeze hitting us and the views are just incredible. Lots of trees, lots of ships, you have a few islands out here. And I think we're finally at the observation deck here. That'd be nice, man. I think that's it right there. It's been a while since the last, uh, it's the last uh, landmark, so. We are right here, observation deck. We have to just do this and then go all the way over there. And this is the observation deck. Views from here over the ocean. We have the cliffs to the left, cliffs to the right, lots of boats, islands. In front of us, we have Sangdo Island, which means Tea Kettle Island. Way in the distance, you can't really see it right now because of the fog. You have Demondo Island, then you have Brother Island, Jejedo Island, Tree Island, just lots of islands here. I mean, wow. This is, whoa. I mean, the breeze, I hope that you guys can hear me, but the great breeze up here, really cold. Beautiful trees. All right, David, we gotta deviate off the path just a little bit. We're walking along here. We gotta start from here, go down here. That's where the lighthouse is. Let's do it. So the hike down to the lighthouse isn't so bad. It's just a bunch of steps, like probably a few hundred steps. Lots of shade, very breezy. Lots of people here. Whoa, we're like really flying down. Over here, it's right there. And that's it, Yangdu Lighthouse. It dates back to 1906, so roughly 113 years old. Uh, beautiful lighthouse right here on the ocean. Yeah. Incredible views, yeah. but you know. The vantage point from here is fantastic. I don't even feel the need to go up it. You can. You yeah, can. if you want it, you can go up to right there to the observation deck. Yeah. I think we're good. We already yeah. went to an observation deck early today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's continue. Let's go up to the temple. Let's do it. After a five minute walk, we're here at Taejung Sa Temple. And this place is famous because here you can find pieces of the holy relics from the Buddha. So basically pieces of his body. And they also have two people trees. I don't know what that is. Oh, bow trees. Okay, bow trees. They were donated by the Sri Lankan government. And this is it. That's it, man. Showtime. Showtime. Show Beautiful. Time. Is there a monk here? Oh, there's a monk right there. I've actually been to a few places where they have the relics of the Buddha. I went to one in Kandy, Sri Lanka. Yeah. And here, in this one, they also have a few pieces. I don't know. They never really tell you what it is. They just tell you they have, you know, pieces from his body. And that's it. This tour of Taejeon Day has come to an end. Wow. I mean, it's really an epic place. Most people don't know about it. But you have to come out here yeah. when you're in Busan. It's south, it's like an island south of Busan, like right over the bridge. And at the very end, you have this like beautiful park. Right when you enter, go down to the bottom and get yourself some delicious seafood. I highly recommend just going with like mussels, <laughs> scallops. Don't be as adventurous as us. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be as adventurous as us because it's uh, it's it's a little too much. Like even for us, like I eat exotic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but having but having a, a squid, uh, sorry, having like a octopus like grab onto my cheek. Yeah. Dead octopus grab my cheek. Yeah. I think we maxed though in terms of exoticness today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little too much. I mean, oh. It was good, but once in a lifetime for me. YOLO with that. And, <laughs> and then after that we came up here, saw a temple, saw an observation deck, lighthouse, next temple, uh, just beautiful place, super nice scenery. And yeah guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace.
What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Busan, South Korea. Today I'm taking you to Gamchuan Cultural Village, a beautiful neighborhood on the hill of a mountain. I mean, it's super colorful buildings, lots of different alleys, they have souvenir shops, but the reason we came here is to go eat Korean street food. I cannot wait to dive into the food. Our, the first vendor is actually right here, yeah. but there's like 15, 16 different things we could try here. I think we might try like five or six. I'm very excited. Let's go eat some Korean street food. Follow us. Like I said, the first street food vendor was like two meters away from us and they have umopang, which is basically like a waffle, fish-shaped waffle with red bean paste inside. I've had something very similar in Japan. I love, especially when it's really hot. This one isn't so hot. She just like had it sit in there for a bit. Yeah, it's three for a thousand, so it's a great deal, really affordable. Just gotta open it up like this. You know what, let me just bite into it. Take his head right off. Mmm. It's like a waffle. But we're having pace. Mmm. Very crunchy on the outside. Not the batter on the inside. And there's a lot of rubbing paste there. Oh, this is so good right now. Yeah. When I lived in Korea, dude, this is what all the like middle school and high school kids would have in the wintertime. Like piping hot, they'd make it, come right out of the waffle batter. Good stuff. Really good, but we can do better. <laughs> we can do better. Yeah. Let's show you some savory stuff. We walked five more feet and we <laughs> found another street food vendor. This guy has a lot of stuff. He has some chicken, he has some hot dogs, but he also has this, which is called Seiyu Hot Bar, yeah. which is shrimp on a stick with like a fish cake. Then what he did is we ordered it, he put it into the microwave, he nuked it basically. <laughs> then he put <laughs> ketchup, <laughs> he put mustard, and here it is. It cost 3,000, so almost like $2.50. I don't know if I'm gonna love this. I, I personally don't love this stuff on sticks, and it, it looks almost like a tempura in a way. Yeah. All right, let's it, I gotta be honest, it wasn't my favorite, dude. Okay. Okay. So different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This shrimp. I don't know exactly what the bottom is. It's like some batter. Maybe it's not fish. It's just batter, right? With some carrots, some vegetables. It tastes very spongy. Spongy, yeah. Mm, and then the ketchup and the the ketchup and the mustard make it feel like a hot dog, <laughs> but it's not a hot dog. <laughs> so I get some more of that shrimp. All right, I'm done with this. It's super mediocre, huh? Yeah. So, dude, this neighborhood is super colorful. It reminds me of Valparaiso in Chile. You got all these brightly colored houses, lots of painted murals, um, tons of stores, restaurants, souvenir shops. Yeah, it's just a fascinating place to go for a walk and considering the temperature right now, loving it man, super cool, super chill, not as many people as the last time we came here. Yeah, so we actually came here about four days ago when we were in Busan yeah. and uh, we didn't really experience it correctly. I mean, we only had about a half an hour to go up and down and just get, you know, awesome shots. That's why we wanted to come back and really experience the street food because we saw there was so many delicious things. So far, we've had an okay and then a bummer. A bummer. <laughs> A real bummer. bummer. That was that was a dud. Yeah, and, and I, then some. And I actually like that we're here now because it's like no tourists. It's like it's quiet. It's quiet. Super chill. Quiet. It's trying oranges. What is that? Goat melon. Goat melon. Goat melon. Goat melon. Goat melon. He's from. Okay. So do we try goat melon? Yeah. I'll try some. Good. Can I have a bite? Thank you. Let's try this. Hmm. Oh wow. I don't know what that is, man. Very refreshing. It's a melon. I don't know the exact name. Goat melon, she said. Two seeds in here. Mmm. Nice and crushing, refreshing. I can't believe this guy's here with his truck, just like handing this out right now. It's pretty awesome. As I'm walking around, I'm noticing a lot of shops that are closed. Obviously, it's Sunday. A lot of people are taking the day off. But there's still a lot of things that are open. Right here, this is really cool. This is uh, so cotton candy, but they dress it up like a cartoon. You wanna try it? <laughs> no, no, I'm no. good, I'm good. I don't need okay. cotton candy. <laughs> I need something savory, man. Yeah, you turn back the clock like <laughs> 25 years, you might, huh? And right here, so what do they have? They have ice cream, yeah. they have oranges, orange machines. Here they have a lot of different things, some rice drinks. Yeah. I don't know if we need that. Over here, what is that? Okay guys, so we just ran into one of these stalls and we saw this weird looking gelatin ball and we were like, you know what, let's try it. We don't know what it's called, we don't know what it tastes like, but <laughs> we know it's orange 
On the side we have a mango sauce, and then this is like, I think peanuts. She so said to break it, eat it. And then we also have frozen beer, which is basically beer with like something, like a slushy on top. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna dive in here. It's basically jello. That's what I'm getting the feeling of. Oh, wow. Like, you do like that, right? And then you get some of that. Well, it's weird. <laughs> so basically, it's jello with like powdered peanuts and a mango sauce. <laughs> Pretty good. I love jello, so it's all my alley. I didn't even know this existed, dude. Like this, this weird street food, right? Yeah. So just put it all over the place. It's unique. It's unique. Mm. Oh, I'm in love with this, dude. Actually, it's really good. Mmm. Okay. The best part is to mix the sauce with the powdered peanuts. Oh wow. And next up, I'm gonna wash it all down with a nice frozen beer. So what is that, dude? <laughs> it's like a slushy. I think it's a beer. They put like three quarters beer, and then they put like some kind of a, a slushy ice cream beer tasting. It, it's it's <laughs> foamy a foamy thing on it's top. Like an, it's like a, a slushy with honey on top, a little bit of honey. Then you just go like this and go. That's weird. <laughs> this is always weird. So the little Jello ball costs three thousand won each. And the beer, the frozen beer, costs forty five hundred. So you're thinking like you're, you're talking about like two dollars and fifty cents for the ball, and then like four bucks for the beer. Mm. And right across from the place where we got the Jello ball, we have an epic view. This is probably one of the best views of the neighborhood. Beautiful view, incredible. Love the colors here: pink, blue, green, yellow, every single type of color you can think of. You got the mountains in the background. It looks like Jurassic Park out there. No, I'm just joking. I mean, just lush green. You have a few, a few taller buildings that those must be like hotels. And yeah, let's continue. Let's see if we find anything else. Everything's closing right now. It's 5:30. I'm, I'm hoping we find a few more street food vendors. Let's see. Let's see. Wish us luck. And here we have another observation deck, and this one's way bigger than the last one, and you get way better views. You can see the ocean, you get the entire city. Yeah, it's more of a like sweeping wide panorama. You see like where things start from the top of the hill all the way down to the bottom. It's pretty awesome. So we came to the end of the street, and uh, basically it ends, yes. and then it's a street with cars that wraps around the mountain, and that's it. No houses, nothing. Yeah. So I mean, our street food adventure sort of comes to an end, but we're not giving up. We're gonna go back and see if we find any, you know, restaurants or a terrace we can get a good view and get yeah. some food. I know there's good food here, there so we just gotta find it. Just gotta find it. <laughs> Hopefully, some places are still open. Yeah, I think so. I mean, what you see right now is basically just like sunset, right? Yeah. A few yeah. different souvenir shops, lots of souvenir shops actually. I mean, if you really want to buy something, it's the place to come. Just so you know, 6.30 on a Sunday is not a good time to come here. No. I highly recommend coming earlier because right. now it's it's basically over. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head down the mountain and look for some food and some beer. Are you ready? I'm ready, man. I still got the appetite, believe me. I'm ready too. <laughs> All right, let's go eat. Yo, where are we? Where are we? We are near the beer place, and this is where we had street food the other day. Kind of like at the heart of the, of the downtown area. Yep. And this is the, the brewery right here. So it's a craft beer place. I think it's a brewery. It says Galmagi Brewery. Galmagi Brewing right here. So we're ending everything off here at Galmagi Brewing in the heart of downtown. As you can see, it's a nice like craft bar. They have pizzas and some appetizers. We really didn't want to go for that, so we're just gonna end it with a nice beer. I got a rye IPA. I love rye IPAs. They also have stouts, they have pale ales, they have pills, and they have a lot of different brews. Obviously, if you're into craft brewing, you'll love it because it's a big assortment of beers from Busan, which I've never tried before, so let's try it. Oh wow. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. It's hoppy. I love the rye taste to it. So it's a, really, it's a rye beer mixed with an IPA. Rye PA, right? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, guys, so we had an amazing time out there. I mean, in all honesty, the food wasn't my favorite. It's probably some of the worst street food I've had ever. 
<laughs> uh, I mean, to be honest, the only thing I liked really was a Jello. It was super nice. I had the peanut sauce. I had the mango like syrup. That that was awesome. The views up there are amazing. I mean, you have to go there for sure when you come to Busan just because it's a must visit just to go experience it. In terms of food, maybe the the pancake that wasn't open could be a really good option. And yeah, go up there, get amazing views, have a coffee, roam around. Don't go there on a Sunday too late in the afternoon. Everything is closing. I actually suggest going there early in the morning, maybe like 10 in the morning, any day of the week. And yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel, his channel. Gambe. Gambe, bro. A long Gambe. day. Gambe. 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 Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in pouring rain Busan, South Korea. It is the worst day of the trip, but we're not gonna let this rain bring us down. We're gonna go have an incredible Korean breakfast. We've been looking around and we found some place right here in Centum City called Hopako, which is like named after a pumpkin. They, it looks really nice, very cozy restaurant, wooden tables, and I think they have a big feast for breakfast, like lots of vegetables centered around like a pork and maybe a soup, right? And after this, we're going to Shinkansen Centum City, the largest department store in the world, according to the Guinness World Records. They actually open at 11 in the morning, so we have about an hour and a half before they open. Let's go inside and eat some delicious Korean breakfast. And here we go, another epic breakfast in South Korea. Look at this, we've got like 10 different items. Oh my god, we have the two stars of the show right here, and then we have all the banchan, which are the side dishes. So basically, this is what we have here. We have fish cake with like a little bit of spice, we have like lettuce, right? And that goes paired with the spicy pork with spring onions. We have kimchi, spicy kimchi. We have a thick soybean paste right here. Oh, that looks amazing. We have some herbs right here. We have an egg souffle. Looks really good. I haven't tried this yet. We have more herbs. We have rice. And here we have a tofu soup with a soybean base. Wow, I mean, this looks incredible. This I love. This I love. I mean, I love it all because I love freaking vegetables. So the way it works here is that you have to go get your utensils, right? They're right here. Bam, got the spoon, got the chopsticks. You got your napkins. <laughs> napkins right here. Before you start, they always give you a little, you know, a little wet wipe. Clean your hands a little bit. If you want to clean your face. Oh, that feels good. Man, the rain outside is horrible today. The worst day I've, I've had in a long time traveling. It's like, can't even believe how, how wet it is outside. All right, anyways, let's start. I'm gonna start here always with the fish cake. Oh man, this is so good. Here we go. Mmm. Super thick fish cake. Oh, it's delicious, not too spicy. More like a sweet and sour sauce. A little bit of cheese in there, but it's really good. Mmm, super tasty. Wow, that was awesome. Next up, we have the kimchi. And in case you guys don't know, there's over 200 types of kimchi here in South Korea. Some are, you know, I personally don't understand the differences. What I've seen that's different is always the spice level. Some of them are very low, some of them are like boiling hot. Oh yeah, it's spicy. <laughs> I know. Whoa, that was really spicy, man. No water? No, it's totally the water right there. Kimchi also differs by its sourness. So sometimes it's really sour, sometimes it's like almost not sour at all, right? And right here we have the soybean paste. Oh, this looks super nice. Oh, wow. It's really potent. <laughs> mm, but it's nice. It's like, a, it's like a soybean jam. A little thick. Wow, bro. I haven't had this before. I suggest not getting too much, but I love it, so mmm. I'm gonna mix up one of these later. Wow, that's awesome, man. Next up, we have some herbs. This looks hot. It looks really spicy. Oh my god. Mmm. It's not really herbs, it's more like a like seaweed mixed with spices and chilies. Oh man. I mean, if you really like spicy stuff, you will love this breakfast. So far, everything has had a kick to it. Wow, bro. <laughs> Next up, we have the egg souffle. First time trying this in South Korea. 
It basically like a flan. Very soft. Almost like a gelatin like consistency. It's it's a little bland. I would add some maybe the soybean paste to it and give it some like kick, you know? But it's okay. Pretty good. Now we got some more herbs. This looks like I don't know, it could be like spinach. I have no idea what this is. Mm. Super nice and crunchy. Mm. Super fresh. Oh, sesame seeds on top too. It's really good, but enough of the vegetables. Let's dive into the main dishes. I'm gonna go with this one, the pork, the spicy pork. Wow, look at this, man. This is so good. So I'm gonna have a little bit alone. Mm. Not spicy at all. Mm, just very tender, very fatty. Got some spring onions. What you're supposed to do, always, always in Korea, to give you the lettuce. So you always do like a little lettuce wrap with pork. So get some of that. Some of the herbs. Don't make it too big because then you can't fold it. Fold it up into this little cube right there, a little ball. Mm. It's a great contrast between the lettuce and the pork. I really love it. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it up, okay? I'm gonna get some of this, right? A little bit right there. But I'm gonna also put the soybean paste because I wanna give it a kick. I'm guessing that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know if you're supposed to just eat it like this, just straight, but. Oh man, the soybean paste. So I see I put a little too much of the pork so I can't really wrap it completely. Just the intensity of the flavor to another level. Mmm. Man, you just know how tender the pork is. The pork here in South Korea is really amazing. I mean, I compare this to like what I get like in Texas in terms of like barbecue stuff. That's so good. I'm gonna eat the rest of that. <laughs> and then here we have the tofu soup. So what do we have here? Soybean base, tofu, you got onions. You have some greens. I think there's some seafood in here as well. We got some mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of stuff in here. So the soybean paste right here, that is used as the base for the soup. So it's gonna have a little cake, I'm sure. So I'm just gonna get some of this, right? Mmm. Mmm. A little cake. Mmm. Oh, amazing. I got everything right there. I got the mushroom, got the onions, super soft tofu. Oh, it's just like, they give you a lot. Look at that, this can give you so many vegetables. And before, I forget, let me try some of the broth alone. Mm. Nice broth, not fishy at all. So I don't think there's, there is that much seafood in here. Oh, it's a little spicy. Whoa, ooh, that's, that's hot. Oh, I like it. Mm. And yeah, guys, that is basically it. I've tried everything. Wow, a lot of food. I think me and Sam are gonna devour every single thing before we leave. And I think both of our favorite was this pork, right? Grab some of the pork, so juicy, so greasy. Put it into that lettuce. And I was inspired by what you did. You grab the, the soybean paste, so I'm gonna do just that. But instead of just having it as a big uniform clump, I'm gonna try to spread it around, wrap it up, take a bite. Huh. Mm. 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 The soybean paste takes it to a new level. It gives it a whole different flavor. A lot more saltiness. Mm. It's so tasty. I feel like we appreciate this breakfast even more today just because like of how much it's raining outside, how we got wet, we had a little trouble like getting around and to come inside and dry off, have nice warm food like this. I feel like I appreciate it like 10 times more than a normal day. This has just been fantastic. Because it's raining so bad outside, we decided to go underground through the metro system. And when we got to the other side, there was actually an entrance right here underground. Dude, let's go check out the biggest department store in the world. They're right there. So as soon as we entered the mall, we had to go up some escalators and then we made it here into a huge department store. Right here to the right, we have a lot of food and then we have like shoe racks. We have cakes. I mean, so many different things. I mean, it's like it's like nonstop different types of vendors. We have Starbucks right here, and then yeah, there's like a bakery. Wow, the cakes here are so good. 
Oh my god, they're like round shaped cakes. I've never seen this before. This is crazy. Oh man, strawberries. So dude, we just found a section, like kind of a little bakery. It looks like they're making a whole bunch of different sweet and savory buns over there. Fresh out of the oven. So this mall is huge, seven floors. There's so many different vendors. There's like, you know, shoe shops, lots of different food vendors, a lot of fast food. And right here on the fourth floor, we have an ice rink. Ice rink, dude. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I can skate, so I wish I could put on my skates and, and go for a little uh, rip around the ice. I'm a Canadian, man. <laughs> I, I was born with my skates on. It's been a while since I've done that, so I won't get out there. But yeah, I mean, it's really early. The mall just opened. It's very empty, but there's still people eating. And yeah, we're just gonna explore a little more and see what we find. So we just had a short visit to the biggest department store in the world. It's really, really impressive. It's super massive. I mean, I think it's nine plus stories and a basement level. They have like a spa land. They have, a, you know, arcade games. They have every single brand you can imagine from Gap all the way to super luxury like Prada. They also have a lot of food items from like restaurants to the super fast food and the ice skating rink. I think that was the most impressive part for me because it's really nice in there. I actually don't ice skate, but my boy was going to do it. He decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, you, if you're ever in Busan and you want to see the biggest department store in the world, I highly recommend going over there. It's in Centum City, you know, it's on the other side of town, over this huge bridge. And for me, the best part of the day was the breakfast. I mean, the delicious Korean, massive Korean breakfast. My favorite thing had to be the soybean paste mixed with that pork on that lettuce oh so good so delicious super healthy and guys if you love this video please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel his channel and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in busan south korea peace Hey, good afternoon everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Busan, South Korea. Today's actually a really bad day outside. It's raining cats and dogs. So we decided to come here to the Galchi Market or Fish Market. The biggest fish market in the country. And I think it's the number one attraction in this city. It's a feast for the eyes. I mean, as soon as you get here, you see it's like never ending stalls and people are selling fish and seafood. They have lobster, crab, lots of different fish I've never seen before clams, oysters, I mean it does not end. So basically the way it works is there's multiple levels. The first level, it's full of all these stalls where you can buy fish and then you go and you take your fish upstairs and then make it for you. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take you on a tour of the market, we're gonna explore the first level and then go to the second level and have a delicious lunch. And what we're gonna do is we're not gonna have like seafood, we're gonna have more fish, more like sashimi, Korean sashimi. Are you guys ready? I'm hungry. We're now walking through the first level of the market. Yeah. It is. <laughs> a feast on the eyes. I mean, it doesn't yeah. end. You yeah. have vendors after vendors, and actually, right here on the top, it actually tells you what numbers they are. Yeah. So right here is 49. Or there we could see like 300 and something. I mean, it just really never ends. Yeah, it never ends. You know what's interesting? I'm realizing because I can read the Korean. Every different vendor has their name on it. It's basically the name of the person, and uh, they have their phone number as well. And okay. so you can get in touch with them. Like if you have a good experience, wow. I suppose you can come back and like call them and be like, hey man. I want some sushi. <laughs> <laughs> but they all have very similar stuff, right? I mean, yeah. it's like over here, this is different. This is like all fish. Over there, they have like king crabs, stone crabs, lobsters. Yeah. Here, they have a lot of mussels, a lot of oysters. Yeah. I mean, so many things. This is this is like what is this is called a fish snake? That's a sea. Yeah, it's an eel. It's a fish snake. It's a fish snake. Wow. And then yeah. over here is giant fish. Giant. Looks amazing. Barbecue, barbecue, okay, barbecue. Barbecue, barbecue. Yeah, and then these are like some giant oysters, yeah. more mussels. This is like the, the flatfish. They have a lot of the flatfish. I've seen a lot of that. And yeah. they have uh, they have octopus and they yeah. have like a, a squid, a Korean squid. Exactly. The way I would describe this is they have everything you could ever imagine and not imagine all at this market. Yeah, I, I'd go like, I'd go the traditional route. Whatever you've tried before, mm -hmm. that's what I would eat because some of this other stuff, yeah, we, we, we went exotic yesterday for lunch <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a kind of a once, one and done experience, let's say that. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have some delicious fish though. Yes, we're going fish, we're going raw, probably something, something like a sashimi or a sushi. Perfect. Let's do it. So David, this is actually what I think we're gonna be having for lunch. This is the sliced up fish, the hue. And I believe it's flounder, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that it is. So we've already found a guy, super friendly guy that we're gonna buy from. He's in stall seven just across the building. 
And so yeah, we're just gonna tour around here a bit longer and then we're gonna head over there. He's gonna hook us up. We're gonna go to the second level and have a delicious feast. This first level is made up of three super long rows. Each one has over 300 stalls. And again, it's just a crazy amount of seafood here. Like this, I haven't even seen this, this is a big squid. And I, I just don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is probably the biggest fish market you'd ever go to in your life. It's the biggest one in South Korea. I've never seen a bigger fish market. Have you? No, this is as big as it gets. I mean, there's a real big one in Seoul too, called Noryongjin. I'm not, between the two, I'm not entirely sure which one is bigger, but this is definitely Busan's biggest for sure. No, 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 this is number one in the country. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. I read number one in the country. Wow, so it's even bigger than Seoul. That would make sense because of the location. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably bigger by a little bit, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, the only other wet market uh, or market I've been to like this is a wet market in Manila. Yeah. A huge one. Wow. But, dude, this is like never ending. And the crazy thing is that these this animals or this, this fish and seafood that you'll never see anywhere else in the world yeah yeah and I love man the stone crabs and the king crabs yeah dude can we get one <laughs> <laughs> they're so good they're so, so good, good. So and good. it's easy you just crack it open and eat eat it People don't just come here to buy the fish and eat upstairs. They also come here, buy it, take it home. Okay. And restaurants also buy their fish here as well. I mean, obviously, where else would you buy fish or seafood in all of Busan from the biggest fish market in South Korea? And uh, yeah, I'm starving. Let's go eat some food. You ready, Sam? You ready? Hungry? <laughs> That's called the flatfish. They, everybody has the flatfish, but that flat one fish? was massive. That one was like oh my two feet long. The thing was incredibly big. She couldn't even pick it up. It is crazy, man. It's intense. Oh my god. We're back in the second building, and here it's a mix between a market and also tables you can eat. We're gonna go to our guy, which is right over here. We're gonna get some food. We're gonna go upstairs. We're gonna eat on the second floor. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Yeah. Uh, salmon one. Uh, two bucks. Sushi. Yes, yeah. please. Th which is the sashimi? Ah, oh, yeah. I think we'll just do the, the sushi. So this is Kion John, and he's the guy we're ordering the fish from today. So this is a stall, it's, it's number seven. It's in the second building, the very corner. And what we're doing is we're ordering Korean sushi. We're getting a big spread, I think it's like 40, 41, which is like 35 US dollars. We're getting a few of these fish. Oh man, I cannot wait. It's gonna be good? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna throw in some crab and maybe some eel? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to the third level, right? Third yes. level? Okay, so let's go upstairs and let's eat. Dude, I'm so hungry. The fish, I'm about to dive in. All right, so what we did is we paid for the food yeah. and we saw him basically grab the fish and start preparing it, right? So he got to the fish. And, uh, and now what we're doing is we were going to the third level and I think the, the owner's mother is taking us up there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> we're in a tiny elevator right now. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go upstairs and eat. And here we are in the third level, as you can see. This is just tables, non-stop tables, all traditional tables. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Wow, this is awesome, man. Dude, this is amazing. And it's very little people today, obviously, because it's raining. But yeah, we're trying to find our table here. I, I really want a traditional table. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right there, wherever. That looks awesome. Oh, this is cool. Let's take off our shoes and get up there. Oh, this is nice. So we sat down at a traditional table. This is the way you have to do it. You can't go and sit at a regular table. I mean, you're in Korea, you gotta do it this way. And before we eat, we're gonna have some soju and some beer. I mean, this goes better with the fish, yeah. but this is a, a lighter thing, you know? This is like really strong, 100%. Yeah. Oh, what's happening oh, here? Oh, these are the... the um, these are the banchans? These are the banchans, look at that. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, so Thanks let me driving. open up the, the soju first though. Yep. Oh, come nice. some of Come some of that. Have some soju, soju, sweet potato, distilled sweet potato. Yeah, gambe. soju, gambe. gambe. Mm, that one's actually really nice. Very smooth. Smooth. Babe. He doesn't like it. <laughs> so that I don't like it. I've been drinking a little too much lately. I'm a bit off of it because I had uh, uh, I had soju after I had beer and wine and then soju. Woke up with a stomach ache the next day, so I'm slightly off of soji for a couple of days. And our amazing Chobot feast has arrived. Check this out. Three different fishes. We have, what, eight, eight, eight. 
Oh my god, I'm so excited. I've been eating sushi since I was like eight years old. Dude, I love sushi. And this is sushi. If you guys don't know the difference between rolls and sushi and sashimi, sushi is basically sashimi on top of rice, okay? And this one's very unique because what he did for us is that he also added wasabi on top of the rice right there. Look at that. All right, so what we have is three different sauces. We have like a spicy sauce. I think this is like a soy sauce, looks like it. This is samjan, which is like the traditional sauce here in Korea. I love this sauce, like I can eat it with everything. So I'm gonna just dive in and start with this one. And I have no idea what this fish are. I mean, I think one of them is flounder and the rest are just white fish. I mean, he couldn't really tell us exactly what they were, but I'm sure it's amazing. All right, so let's go with this one first. Mmm. Oh my God. It's a big piece of sashimi right there. Mmm. I love how the wasabi's in the middle. It's a little cake. Oh man, it's so amazing. Dude, super tender fish. And right here we also have the caviar. Oh wow. Oh, wow. That's good. It's really good. And then, I'm gonna go with this one. And this one I'm gonna do some of the, the red spicy sauce. Right there. Ooh, it's gonna be spicy. Mmm. Sriracha, that's exactly what it is. Mm. Oh wow, man. Super nice sticky rice. Just gotta take that in, that was so good. That fish just evaporated in my mouth. That one's a little thicker than the last one. So uh, the consistency is a little different too. I really don't know the differences in, in terms of like what they are, but wow, blowing me away. It's so good, man. It's like my favorite meal so far. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna drop it into this one. Oh, right there with some onions, spring onions too. Oh, wow. Mmm, that's the best sauce. The best sauce. Mmm, some sesame right there. This is actually the thickest of the of all the sashimis, or the sushi. The fish is very tender, has a little red strip on it. Um, again, this I think this was like the more of a, the, the long fish that we saw. Oh, but very nice. I mean, super fresh, the freshest you can get in Korea for sure. Man, I'm just like in love with this. This is probably my favorite meal of all time in Korea because I'm just in love with sushi. And remember, it's called chobap. Remember, it's chobap, which is sushi in Korea. Don't call it sushi, that's Japan. <laughs> and you know what? Ginger all day. Oh, mm. That's some potent ginger, man. Wow. This is real ginger. Wow. All right, let's eat some more. <laughs> David, this chobop has been like phenomenal. There's three different kinds. I can't choose a favorite, honestly, like all three of them. They're like amazing. What's so cool and unique about this Korean style chobop sushi is that the slices are a little bit thicker than what I'm used to. So you get more fish and it's just, oh, so delicious. Another thing, David, that I love about this is that they put wasabi under each individual piece, meaning you don't have to worry about it. It's just, it's there, and it's just the right amount. I love putting it into that samjang sauce, just like that. Oh my gosh, that, that is like heavenly sauce. I'm just popping it, one biter. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Unbelievable. Like, this is, have you come to Busan? I say it's the number one thing to do in the city. The meal's not over yet. So the lady who's serving us right here, she also makes rice dishes and soups. And she said, hey, you guys want a soup? We're like, yeah, you know, we'll go for a soup. It's in, like an extra 10,000 won, so like $8.50. And I think, from what I understood, is that this is a fish head soup. I think that is the fish head right there. Whoa. Oh my God. And it's mixed with the mushrooms. You got some veggies. I think there's a radish in there. Oh my God, there's another fish head right there. Whoa. Whoa. That is unreal. Yeah. I mean, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the lady to come and turn it off and then we'll serve each other. We have, uh, we have some bowls right here, right? And yeah, I mean, it's just a nice veggie soup to end the meal. And I think we have to do it because, you know, with the sushi you get full, but you don't get so full. I mean, in like two hours, you're gonna be empty. Yeah. It's a good way to end it. And yeah, I mean, it's just fish head and vegetables, right? Looks so good. Oh, it's so, oh my God, this is gonna be good. So it looks like the soup's ready. Let's grab some. I'm gonna grab a, a big amount right here. Ooh, ooh, it's like falling off. 
So I'm gonna get some of that. I need to get some fish though. Oh, okay. Whoa, look at that. What? Get some of the broth. I didn't get any of it. Wow, I got a lot of fish there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here. And that thing is still piping hot. I know, I know, it looks really hot. So I'm gonna try first the broth a little bit. Oh, <laughs> super hot, <coughs> a little spicy. Very fishy, mm, but it's nice. Whoa, dude, that's spicy. Mm, incredible. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and grab some of this fish. As you can see, this is like the spine with some of the flesh. So I pull some off, you know, don't get any of that bone. It's a little hard. I'm just gonna grab a little bit here. Mmm, mmm. Very nice and soft. Oh, wow. Spring onion. What is this, a radish? That's a potato. <laughs> we also have a little bit of uh, shrooms here, like super thin shrooms. Oh, I love these. And they're so hot, man. It's a spicy soup. Oh, the best thing is the mushrooms. I'm just a big mushroom fan. They eat mushrooms all day long. Mm. Still piping hot, like piping hot. <clears throat> all right, so we have a bunch of banshee, or banchans, right? Yep. A few different things here. <clears throat> got the jelly, carrot, uh, edamame, ginger, corn. Got a super spicy pepper and garlic. I'm leaving these to the side. I don't want to ruin my stomach right now. I'm gonna try the jelly first. If I can get it. Take like a thick jello. No taste. <laughs> exactly, man. That's what I felt. Like thinking. no taste, man. Oh. Never trying that again. Mmm. <laughs> this corn is like sticky. What did they put here? They must have put some type of syrup or something. Mm. Oh, man. That's different. I personally am a big fan of the big corn, like from Chile and Peru, huge ones. Oh wow, that's like very, very sticky. It's like super, it's like almost like the gelatin inside the corn. Mm. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna try some more ginger, because I love the ginger. Mmm, very fresh, very potent. Mmm. This is the best thing to have after a meal. Always eat that. Got some carrots. Mmm, nice and fresh. Very hard. And a mummy. Mmm. We always order this in a Japanese restaurant. We always order it. What I usually do is I put it in eel sauce or put a lot of salt. Nice fresh. I mean, overall, today we had an incredible experience here at the fish market. I mean, it's a must visit when you come here to Busan. You come in, you explore, there's two buildings. Go to the first building, the main building, see the entire floor. The first floor is huge, like 900 different vendors selling every type of seafood and fish you can imagine. Shark, eel, stingray, clams, mussels, I mean, just never ends, octopus, squid. And then what you should do definitely is buy some fish, so you know, you just choose what you like. If you find somebody you like, they'll like sell you some fish, you choose it, whatever you want, you usually have this menu. I'm gonna tell you, this is one of my favorite sushis I've ever had in my life. I was recently in Japan, and this blew away everything I had there. I mean, I guess it's because of the freshness, right? Like buying it at the market, seeing the fish, the killer fish, you eat the fish. I mean, that's how fresh it is. Super delicious, and I love adding, I love how they added the wasabi in the middle. Just like, you killed it with that one. And guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, Sam's channel. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Anything else I can eat? <laughs> no, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So is your time, man. So is your time. Don't <laughs>Good evening everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in rainy Busan, South Korea. Today we're in the Somyeon district. This is actually the area of town where we're staying. It's like a downtown area. This street we're on is really vibrant, lots of colors. It actually feels like Tokyo. I mean, neon lights everywhere, lots of restaurants. But tonight I'm taking you to eat something called duck gobi, which is basically spicy chicken barbecue Korean style. It looks amazing. Sam was telling me about it and I just can't wait to dive into it. And besides just eating the chicken barbecue, 
once we eat like half of it, they're gonna bring fried rice and they're gonna bring cheese and we're gonna devour a delicious, amazing fried rice, chicken fried rice. He's saying it's probably gonna be the best fried rice of my life. Let's see. Let's go inside and let's eat. We're finally in the restaurant. As you can see, a lot of young people here, lots of college students. And right in front, we have like the grill, right? This is where we're gonna do the barbecue. And I'm very excited because I've had fried chicken, but I haven't had duck colby, spicy barbecue chicken. I mean, it sounds amazing. I've had pork, I've had beef, but no chicken yet. And yeah, I mean, the restaurant is very warm, very nice family atmosphere in here. I think we're gonna get a beer. And right here, as you can see, like all these different versions, right? Yeah. So everything has chicken. And what Sam was telling me is that what's gonna happen is we're gonna do the chicken. Yeah. And then once half of it's done, then they're gonna come and make uh, a bob. So they're gonna put uh, rice. Yeah. And they're gonna fry it up, right? And yeah, I'm just over overly excited I, I love korean barbecue it's just the best thing in the world it's funny how in america i've barely seen them i saw actually in tokyo but i didn't go in because obviously i was just diving into japanese food while i was there and yeah i'm very excited i can't wait for it to get here and let's call her lady over and get a let's get a beer oh let's get a beer and i didn't mention the price was super cheap it was like nineteen thousand, so you know like 17 dollars for both of us to eat wow dude wow so dude, duck albi is a dish that I absolutely love. It's one of the first things I ever had when I came to South Korea. It originates from the city of Chuncheon. It's extremely popular with young people, university students. Also, I noticed it's become one of the most popular Korean dishes abroad. When I traveled in Japan, I went to both Tokyo and Osaka, and there's Korea towns in both of those cities. And the primary dish that they were serving was duck albi. But not just any kind of duck albi, it was duck albi with cheese. Oh man, and it's just arrived. And here we have have the duck gorbi. Wow, what a plate. We have so many different ingredients here. Lots of grease, lots of oil, lots of like spice. You can see we have chicken, we have some cabbage, green peppers, uh, what else? Red pepper, we got the duck. Oh, I love the duck, the rice cake. And yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. They don't give us plates, we eat it directly from here. And the way it's gonna work is that we're gonna eat half of it, and once that's done, we're gonna get the rice. So let me just dive in. Let me try some of this delicious chicken. Oh my God, dude, <laughs> it looks so good. Dude, it's so tender. Mmm, loving the spice. Dude, the red paste in there. Mmm, what's the name of that paste? The gochujang, yeah. The gochujang, yeah, man. So they, they cooked it all together. It's like a huge stir fry in a way. Wow, man. I'm gonna jump into this one next. Hey, Korean, Korean chicken is the best chicken in the world. Seriously. It's funny because today we didn't eat any duck, which is a Korean rice cake. And I was like, I was like fiending for it. <laughs> Yesterday we ate it like three times. Yeah. Oh, bro, this is so nice. I just love stir fries. They're like delicious. Oh, nice, nice cabbage, spring onion. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Dude, they cooked this delicious food. Look at that spice. <laughs> it's not really that spicy, but that hit me right there. No. I don't know any good thing or waste. Wow. Dude, I'm blown away. This is my second barbecue in Korea, and I cannot tell you how good it is. I mean, I'm still diving, bro. <laughs> Mm. The chicken just so soft, man. So soft. And nice bite sizes all over the place. All right, let me get some more. Dude, so we are having height, extra cool, Macju, Korean beer. We had this for lunch. It was, it was awesome, man. It went so well with the, the chobop we had for lunch. It was so well with any kind of barbecue. It's just so refreshing, cold. Oh man, like, yeah, exactly. I'll try it for you guys. Uh, you know what I like about Korean beer is it's nice and light, it's extra cold. I mean, that's what the label says, and that's how it's been served. It's delicious. Gumbe. Oh my god, guys. Okay, so they brought the fried rice. We got two orders of fried rice. They threw it on here. Then they brought two orders of cheese. They threw that on there too. They turned this thing to like super hot. They started mixing it, mixing it like a lot, a lot, a lot. 
you know, it looks freaking amazing. It's been basically infused with cheese and all the ingredients. Plus, those fried rices weren't just rice. They were like mixed with chicken and spices. And this looks just incredible. I'm gonna serve myself a little bit. The best thing to do is to get it with this and get the, the rice that's burned on the bottom. Yeah. Right, so like that. Oh, like that. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Korean wow. fried rice is better than Chinese fried rice, right? Yeah. Oh my god. The best of it the just best. It's so rich and there's so many flavors and just wow, man. The regular fried rice doesn't have this many things and it's not this spicy. Yeah. It's gonna be really spicy. Wow. Dude, you're gonna blow me away with this, huh? Yeah, I think you're gonna love it. Oh, the cheese. Cheese just melted throughout. The rice is a little burnt, nice and like crispy. Dude, and then all the different ingredients are in here. Oh. Dude, this is the best fried rice that I've had in my life. Like, wow. it's so freaking delicious. It's so yummy, man. <laughs> Eat the whole bowl, dude. Mm. Mm. Oh, we got a big piece of chicken there. Wow, man. That's like all I can think of is wow. <laughs> so good. I can't even believe this. It's crazy how many different dishes there are in Korea. This is the first time I tried this. This is like my eighth day here. What is Korean food without side dishes, without the banchan? Nothing. They always provide banchan, but here it's different. They don't bring it to you. It's self-service. Here we have five different things. We have the king of kings of the banchans, the kimchi, spicy kimchi. I can't live without it. I think I'm gonna get home and be crying every day if I can't find this. <laughs> we have a yellow radish, we have a white radish, we have like a little cabbage salad with mayo, and then we have pickles. Right, so let me try a few, right? Let me try them all basically. Let's go with this one, right? Yellow radish. This actually really good. Very refreshing, very mm. moist, crunchy. I'm gonna go here with this other radish, like a white radish. It's good, not my favorite. That one was really good though. For the pickles, I like pickles. Oh my god, sweet. Mm. They are very moist. They have a lot of like water. Mm. Next up, we have the cabbage salad with mayo. Got some of that. Mm. Some good mayo. Wow, not a big fan of mayo, but that was awesome. And then I have to end it with my palate cleanser. Oh, right. Oh wow, the all the kimchi in the world. Oh, okay. I don't know if I can put all that in my mouth. <laughs> well, I think I just a little bit. Dude, I love kimchi. Love it. Mm. Mm. That is the bomb. Dot com. Dude, this is, I feel like this is the most gluttonous we've been in Korea, but it's the tastiest. This Korean fried rice is just obscene. Look at this. We still have the red pepper, we still have the dulk, we still have the, the cabbage. So what I did a little differently for us this time than in the past, is I made sure we only had half of the dulk all we eat. Normally you eat like three quarters, or just leave a little bit. But I wanted to make sure there was lots of the, the chicken, lots of the peppers, lots of the rice cakes so that would mix well with the rice and then ordering that extra layer of cheese oh that was the game changer right there okay i'm gonna grab a bite here i think i got some chicken oh i got some dog there wow man that is a supreme bite huge bite mm. oh. packed with flavor the rice is crispy i'm tasting the cheese this is the the best fried rice in the world, man. Come on. Right here on a plate. I wish all of you watching, I wish we could, I, could, I could give you a spoon of them. It's that good. Sam, you're going to town there. You're going to town. This is the best part, the burnt rice. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. That's what dreams are made of. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the most filling meal I've had and probably the best meal I've had in Korea so far. Wow, the duck really blew my mind. 
I mean, the spicy chicken alone was excellent, but then when you add the fried rice and the cheese, it just takes it to another level. It's like eating stuff that is um, from Planet Mars or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real, guys, it is so good. It's like not from this world. And yeah, I mean, in terms of price point, 40,000 won, so like 35 US dollars roughly. The duck albi itself was like 19,000, but then we got the rice, double rice, we got double cheese, yeah. we had two beers, the sides are free, yeah. so always you can just keep eating kimchi all day long if you want. <laughs> this restaurant is called Yugane, it's a franchise since 1981, they have a lot of spots all around South Korea, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around this entertainment district and get a beer. I don't really have space for it, but you live once. <laughs> we'll Yo, make no. it, we'll make space. Oh. I think it's phenomenal. It's like every every major neighborhood in, in big cities in Korea, there's always an entertainment district where you have like non-stop restaurants, cafes, bars especially. And if you want to go hard and long into the wee hours of the night, you have the opportunity to do so in these types of places. Yeah, and I mean, what you find here is basically lots of bars, restaurants. We got Nike shops, two Nike shops. There's like a Ben & Jerry's, a Baskin Robbins, <laughs> a lot of American brands. Yeah. But we're looking for a small bar. Oh, they also have some izakayas. If you guys don't know what izakaya is, it's like, it's a it's a bar in Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're usually on the second and third and fourth and fifth levels, like all on top of each other. Small bites and beers, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we found the izakaya, a Japanese bar. Right here on the second floor. Oh, they have like, Amazing different beers, huh? I think so, yeah. Oh yeah, so they have they have soju though. Yeah, but they also have the I think the local Busan beer, maybe cloud beer. I'm noticing that up there too. And we're ready to the baseball game. Let's go. Let's do it. So we came to Izakaya, a Japanese bar. It's on the second level of this building. And as you can see, we have like a touch screen menu, okay? And we came here for drinks, so here are the drinks. So these are the most expensive drinks like sake, soju, I mean a few different other things here. What else you got? You got like wine, right? Like wine with food. We came here for the beer, right? So we came here for the beer. We found this beer. It's an IPA. It's actually on sale, like like 2,001 off. So like instead of eight, eight bucks, it's six dollars. You know? Click that. All right. So click there. Boom, boom, boom. Two of them is 11,800. So we're gonna end the night with two South Korean IPAs. I'm excited. I love craft beer. Let's drink. And our IPA has arrived. Oh, it's delicious, man. Mm, a little hoppy. Oh, not too cloudy. Very refreshing. It's like a light IPA. Oh, that's really good. And it's Korean, right? Yep. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we had an amazing dinner. Like, one of the best dinners of my life. Duck Golby. Spicy chicken barbecue Korean style with fried rice, with cheese, with beer on the side, side dishes. I mean, such an epic meal. When you come to Korea, you have to try that dish. I mean, it's so good. There's many different types of barbecues, but it's called duck gobi, so chicken, spicy chicken. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was blown away. And I'm still really full. Yeah. I'm gonna remember that for a long time. And guys, let's do a gambe. 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 Ah, oh, so good. If you like this video, thumbs up. Comment below, subscribe to both our channels, and we'll see you in the next Trout Adventure in South Korea. Peace. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, sunny Busan, South Korea. Our time has expired here. We've been here for four incredible days, and now what we're gonna do is we're going from Busan back to Seoul in first class on the KTX, the Korean Express train, which is also called the Bullet Train. It goes 190 miles per hour, and it started service in 2004. You know, we've done economy class from Seoul to Busan, now we're doing first class. We're gonna show you the entire experience. We're gonna show you basically what you can do, what you can't do. We're gonna get a quick bite to eat here in Busan Station, and we're gonna board a train. Let's go. <laughs> oh man, I'm ready to go. It was a funny morning. You know what, we were hoping to get up at five to, to do something. We, we, we slept through our alarms, dude. We went, <laughs> so we've been going so hard the past few days, we slept through our alarms. We had like an hour to get ready, just a bit of a mad dash. But you know what, now that I'm here and that we have like almost an hour, I feel really good. I can't wait to go back to Seoul. What a great way to end the journey, man. What a time in Korea. Yeah, we're entering Busan Station, second largest train station in South Korea. Uh, in terms of food, there's a lot of restaurants here, second floor, a few on the first floor. There's also uh, a few convenience stores. 
All right, so instead of buying some stuff at the convenience store and eating it on the train, we decided to sit down, we have enough time, and eat some food, some traditional Korean food here at this restaurant on the second level. We're gonna have a kimchi stew with rice. It's gonna be a little spicy. I'm super excited, I love it. I haven't tried this dish before. Let me see where Sam's at. Oh, Sam's already sitting down. All right, let's eat some food. And this is our kimchi jjigae. I haven't tried this dish. It looks super spicy, basically a kimchi super spicy stew. Oh wow, so we have onions, spring onions, we got tofu, wow, my god. It's so spicy, <laughs> this, man. This looks so spicy, let me try some of that broth. <coughs> That's spicy, dude. I can't even believe we're trying this for breakfast, man. <laughs> mm. Oh, super spicy, very rich in flavor. I'm just gonna grab some of that kimchi, oh, and get some of the tofu as well. Nice way to start the morning, huh? Oh my god. You guys that sit for a bit. Woo. <laughs> Too hot. Mmm. Pretty good. Besides just being spicy, it's really hot. Oh my god, my eyes are like <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try some of the sides. So here we have like a fish cake, right? Fish cake with um, with mushrooms. Grab some of that. Mmm. Hold on. Hold it. Hold in, yep. Mm. Next we have more kimchi. Comes with every dish, no matter what. Mmm. That, that's actually not spicy in this. Wow. Mmm. Still super yeah, nice. Fermented cabbage. Oh my god, it always is a trick for me. Like, I love it. And here we just have some more vegetables, right? Yep. Mmm. Really refreshing that one. Nice creamy, like sauce to it. And here we have some rice, in case you want some carbs. That is really good. I don't know what's in here, but they put some other stuff, some other grains. Really nice, fresh rice. You know, this is the country of rice, so you have to eat some rice in the morning. But yeah, I mean, this is what you can do when you come to Busan before catching the train. We'll have some breakfast if you have time. You know, we're a little rushed. We have like 30 minutes before we have to board. And yeah, relax here, check out the view. This restaurant's really big. I mean, there's always gonna be seating. Hopefully, you know, this is Busan. There's like, I don't know, three million people. So there's always people in here. And yeah, I can't wait to catch the train. Just gonna enjoy this for a little bit and go, guys. Oh man, what a, what a morning. It's been a rush morning. What a morning. Sam, you enjoying it? I'm loving it, man. It's so spicy, it's so good. It was served a little bit piping hot, so it was a little bit hard to handle. Now it's been sitting for like know, five minutes. It's cooled down a bit. It's just delicious. It's such a rich broth, such a nice kimchi. Oh man, it's so good. Nice way to start the day. Wow, what a spicy way to start the day. I've never eaten something so spicy for breakfast. Woo, it really like lit me up. My, my head's hurting. Uh, it's not hurting, it's like a little hot. <laughs> and yeah, right now we still have like uh, 20 minutes before our train leaves. So we're going straight to the tracks, we won't want to miss it. You gotta be really punctual because here in Korea, there's never, never a delayed train. Like never, oh my God. Sam, careful my bag. We leave at 8.10, right there, Seoul, track number 11. Let's go. As soon as you exit the main part of the station, you know, the resting area, the meeting area, you have these signs that tell you exactly what is delayed and what's not, where everything is. Right here we have 8.10, KTX, that's the bullet train. Everything else is not the bullet train. This is our train, 114, track 11, on time, zero delays. It's really, really amazing. I mean, it's so efficient here. Let's get to the tracks. I don't want to be late. We're in car number three. One way, and it wasn't the way we wanted, so we had to haul our bags down those steps. That was not fun, man. Oh my gosh. I feel like I almost put it on my wrist because we've been buying so many Korean souvenirs to take home. My bag's like twice as heavy as when I first arrived. Anyways, we are trying to find cart number three, and that's way down at the very end. The train is massive. There's like, I don't know how many carts start. There's probably close to 20. And we gotta get on because we have less than 10 minutes before this baby takes off. You know, there's so many cars and you really have to fly to yours because you can't walk through the whole train. I mean, you could do that, but with all the bags and stuff, we too much. Oh my God, this is just a massive train, dude. The only problem is if you're not on the train when it's leaving, you don't make the train and you don't get a refund here. You have to buy a brand new ticket. All right, we just made it. Let's get on this train. A bag's a beast. Beast from the east. Beast from the east. Oh, that's so heavy. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It's first class. 
I've actually already been on first class. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be super nice seating. You can put our seat back right right that all the way. If you really want to, if you want to sleep a little bit, you can also charge your batteries because they have an outlet. And yeah, super nice car. Uh, it's not leather, but it's super nice material. In terms of the price, we paid 83,700 Korean won with 75 US dollars. It's a really great value because you're basically crossing the whole country. You're going from southeast to northwest and it only takes two and a half hours. Amazing, so we're gonna be in Seoul. We left, we're leaving at 8.10. Sorry, we're gonna be there at 10.49. And that means that we basically have the whole day in Seoul. We're not wasting a day traveling. I love that, absolutely love that. Here in first class, I'm gonna give you this little packet. And in it, we have some nuts, some cookies. Let's open it up. It's exactly that. We got chocolate chip cookie. You have some mixed nuts. And you have a white bean. That's it. The other thing I want to mention is that in this route, you have so many tunnels. It's like tunnel after tunnel after tunnel. And the rest is just like mountains and small villages here and there. <clears throat> Let's try these nuts. Oh my God. So we got some cashews, some raisins, some almonds. stops and we're gonna be there roughly in an hour and 30 minutes and that's basically for the train I mean you get the water you get a few snacks you should definitely bring food on board I highly recommend it because here in Korea they don't sell food they don't serve food it doesn't matter which class you're in and yeah a really relaxing ride very smooth All right, I'm gonna go back to my seat and sleep for a bit Wow after a two and a half hour ride we are here in Seoul I slept Easily like 90 minutes. I was super tired. This morning woke up like at 6 and last night I wanted to sleep like at almost 1 in the morning. So I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm okay. And uh, sorry, there's a uh, guy. He wants to be my porter. He wants to carry my luggage. But I'm good. I do this myself. Uh, so yeah, the first class experience has been epic. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through Seoul Station and we're going to our apartment. We actually rented an Airbnb here. It's a two bedroom, one bath. Uh, it looks really nice and it's like literally right outside of exit 12. The reason why I did that is because uh, Sam was telling me, you know, the best thing to do is be right next to Seoul Station. If we have to get anywhere, we can catch trains from here, catch the metro, 
buses. So better to be like super in the center. And yeah, I always I always book apartments in the center. There's nothing there's nothing worse than being in an apartment outside or staying outside of the city because then it always takes time to get there. All right, you ready? Let's go. So the way it works here in, in most places in Asia is that the Airbnb host will send you instructions and most of the time those instructions have photos. So in this one it says go to Seoul station, like the actual train station which we just came into and then from there go to exit 12. Exit exit 12 and then follow the instructions and basically it's just like pictures uh, it's different streets, they don't put the street names, or the, they do, but it's hard to read them, obviously. So what you have to do is just follow the pictures. Follow the pictures and you get there. Oh, yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> I it wish. Is, it I is wish. crazy, it is crazy. It's funny, right? Because I've never seen like that. Only in China, here in Japan, it was like that. Yeah. Like, follow this, follow that, that's it. Now let's find this apartment. I mean, luckily the instructions are very, very clear. It just says, like it has an arrow pointed this way, follow that all the way, and that's it. And then the Airbnb host, what they do is they, they tell you exactly which room number, and then it's usually a password keypad, and this one has that. You know, that's something, that's something really cool here in South Korea, is that you don't have a key. There's a keypad on your door with your passcode to enter. Technology, right? Sam, we're almost there. Oh, finally, dude, finally. A little bit of a walk, for sure. Maybe a bit more than I had imagined, but um, man, we had a little iced coffee. Didn't show you guys that, but I feel like a whole new person. <laughs> I was I was ridiculously tired. This is it, this oh, street. Wow. There's chicken everywhere in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> so the apartment is down this amazing alley full of restaurants. It's like a mini like restaurant row here. Lots of delicious items, my God. Sam was showing me things that I've never seen before that I can't wait to try. So hopefully we get a chance to eat around here. And we are almost there. I think it's like one more little street. Oh man, this luggage. Okay, here we go, here we go. This is it. And this is the apartment, the data house. Second floor. Woo, let's go upstairs. So here we go. Touch. Touch and then. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so here's our apartment. Okay. 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 Wow. Happy, Thank you, happy, happy, happy Super happy. times, happy, happy. This yeah, is amazing. This is really nice. So we have, the, I guess, the host of the house. There's multiple apartments here. She helped us with the first door. I don't know what happened. We didn't open it correctly. Basically, what happened is we like punched in the code, and then we didn't try opening the handle. It just made like this noise that sounded like we were being rejected. So we didn't even bother trying. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> this is our apartment. You got a little kitchen. Yeah. Little living room. Got the bathroom, everything's super clean. It's cute, man. Maybe maybe we'll do a tour later if we have the time. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. two rooms. Yep. And that's it, guys. We traveled today from Ooh. Busan to Seoul in first class on the KTX, the bullet train. Yeah. Amazing experience. I mean, very relaxing. But remember, you gotta be super quiet, especially in the mornings. And uh, yeah, it cost, uh, what, what was the cost? Uh, off the top of my head, I forget. I think it was 80 something thousand. You are correct. 83,700. So roughly $75. Yeah. And that's going first class. You can also go into economy. This is the main way to travel between Busan and Seoul and Seoul and Busan. I mean, only two and a half hours. You can go from one end of the country to the next. Yeah, the, the thing I always think about if you were to drive or do it any other way, it would take you half a day or even longer. So, I mean, this is the way to go. If you go early in the morning, you've still got the whole day either to explore Busan or Seoul or vice versa, depending on which direction you go. Exactly. Well, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Comment below, subscribe to our channels, both of our channels. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea.